Welcome to the stream, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Iggy Kid on Twitch.tv. And now, introducing your host, from the 16-bit afterlife, weighing in at 273 kilobytes, assisted by the hands and voice of her mortal vessel, Iggy Kid, they are the ghost in the machine. The Electric Spectre! El Fantasma de la Electriciedad! We oh! Hey, 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 hello. There we are. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Gotta get my capers in order. Okay. We are ready. To start up finally, I um, yeah, I hadn't been playing this for a minute because I had other ideas, and then I was super busy with that game jam. So you know, I wasn't um, I wasn't necessarily in a spot to keep going. Oh, wow. Okay, so there's up to 20. Cool. Um, but we are going to start it up. So, whereas uh, before we played Shovel of Hope, now we're going to be playing Plague of Shadows, and after that, Spectre Coma, and then King of Cards. Uh, but Plague of Shadows first. Or rather, second, I guess. So, this is not my favorite, but we're going to... We're gonna have a fun time. We're gonna call him Drasmin and Draskmanan. Draskmanan. Let's do it. But villainy ran rampant, and in time, even the most stalwart heroes fell. In the absence of champions, the Enchantress and her Order of No Quarter swept into power. Unbeknownst to everyone, the, mani the maniacal alchemist Plague Knight had plans of his own. He sought nothing less than to concoct a potion of unlimited power. A draft so fiendishly potent that nothing he desired would be out of his reach. Guess I'm reading this a little fast, huh? Each night, a knowingly guards a crucial ingredient. Now. The collection must begin. <laughs> yes. Here we go. Uh oh, the boss is on his way. Gotta get back to the lab first. I don't want to get experimented on. Ah, just hold Y to charge and bomb burst out of here. Come on, hurry up. Hmm. Okay. No audio. Oh, like no audio on your end, okay. Yeah, uh, let me know if, you, I mean, how would you know? If you can't hear me, I guess. Uh, woo, coins, gems. Wait, how's this one? I don't really, I haven't played this one a lot. They just did like the tutorial thing and I didn't get it. Oh, it's a hold. I see, so no, then I. There we go. Okay, this, this is tracking. Got double jump. Ooh. Oh boy, and this is not control the way the Shovel Knight does. I'll be okay. Just not as used to it. I'll, I'll do this. 
I do the shovel one, I do the plague one. I tried the king one, I like it a lot, but I never had time to finish it. We'll see how it is. Uh, oh, I see. So I'm gonna, oh, and then boom, there we go. Hey, I'm getting it. Yeah, this is a fun control scheme. Am I not? Hold on. You can throw bombs in here. You can throw three bombs. Okay. Three bombs to a stretch. And you can get some coins. Ooh, okay. Some precision. Chester, what's up, my man? Oh, it's not here. A full bag of tonics to upgrade your max health. Just open the menu with a minus and drink them down. Oh, and this was moving last. See, that's the thing is that they're mostly the same levels, but they redesigned them a little bit. Whereas in um in Spectre of Torment. It's like a totally, it's like the same aesthetic, but it's a completely different set of uh, completely redesigned levels because his movement system is so different and it involves a lot more environmental stuff to work. Wow! Well, thank you. No, thank you. Whoa, oh, what was that? Yeah. That, didn't he? Oh, I wasn't paying attention. How do I? Um. Gain a health bubble until you fall in battle. Party is Shovel Knight. Oh, oh, there's an apple. That'll keep me seated for a minute. Uh. Ah, what do I do? What do I do? No! Yeah, not having the pogo bounce really changes how you think about these enemies. that. Hmm. Uh, is it why I like in Shovel Knight? No. Crap, I should have been attention, huh? Get out of here. Uh, controls? That's what I did. Yeah. Nah. I don't know, maybe I just don't know, because that'd be bad. How do I use the uses it automatically? I don't know. Or no, is it... Do they mean... Ow! Oh. That's how you do... Okay, you just have to select it from the menu. I see. Okay, see, yeah. I'm not shocked that Yacht Club did really good with this. I just didn't appreciate it as much because it was such a it felt like such a minor change and it felt kind of awkward to control but this, is, this feels pretty okay this is a very different vibe you know what yeah 
Ouais. Ouais, ouais. Oh boy. Um. So, what's been going on? Me, I did that game jam. I'm gonna continue working on the game. I think I said that last time. I recorded vlogs as I was working on it, so I'm gonna edit those together. I was gonna try and do it on Wednesday, but I probably will have that up uh, next week. I haven't really done anything for YouTube in a while, because as I said, I don't want to do low effort content anymore. If I can't do high effort content, then I'm, you know, it's. I think at this point I've just realized that I'm just not gonna be happy doing lower effort content, so I'm just gonna do the uh, best effort I can manage. Which is a decent amount, man. I can, when I do smaller content, or when I did whiteboard games, it's like I did some interesting stuff, I think. At least for my skill level, but I just, uh. this turkey. Um, let's see. Yeah, I'm gonna do those vlogs. Ooh, that felt good. Felt like I knew what I was doing. Uh, what is this? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, I see. So, yeah, that because I... While the content... Um, while the actual video making is going to be pretty straightforward, uh, what I'm going to talk about in it, making a game, that's a little more involved. There'll be some time lapses of me doing the art, which was, uh, I'm not a professional artist, so don't get your hopes up too much. It's interesting how the bubbles are still here, even though, as far as I can tell, they don't really do anything for me. Ooh. Okay, yeah, having the double jump is essential here because it really lets you fine tune it. That makes the movement system feel real nice. I'm into it, I'm into it. Alright, in the washing machine. There we go. This guy. Uh. Yeah, that. I got some other ideas. This was that came from that, where I just want to talk about game design. Uh, I'm still. I was talking with a friend of mine who we were. Um. I wrote the outline for a point and click adventure game. That uh, we're gonna probably make at some point. I mean, it starts as a point-and-click adventure game. I don't want to get too deep into it because I don't know. It's still very early stages. I've only written like a tiny bit. A uh, tiny bit. Um, written. I got the outline done, so I know what I want the story to be. But gameplay-wise, there's some things that I. Like to do, but I think might be a little too ambitious with our skill level, so I don't want to get anybody too hype until I have a better idea of how it goes. I don't want to be a Yandere dev and be like, yeah, it's gonna be Persona meets Hitman. You're gonna have a full school that's as dense as the Hitman stuff, and I'll do it all by myself or with volunteers. Buddy, if he makes money and doesn't pay all of those volunteers a lot. Oh man. Can be. It is it, once that I mean I think it's officially came out now or at least like some part of it. But like yeah, that is gonna be messy when he uh when he finally releases it. There's gonna be a lot of people coming for him in terms of hey, come on. Because I can guarantee he must have a big team if he's making it at all. And I think all those people deserve a cut, right? Like, the idea is that you're 
donating your time at the beginning, but if money comes into play, it's like, well, maybe I should get that. Hence why my move is usually if it's unpaid, but they're planning on paying, doing it at any point, I will write up a contract. Um, that is usually like, you don't have to pay me now, but if it does make money, I want a cut of that. Ah, I panicked. Well, not getting that money back. Um, which a lot of times they balk at, which I think is a pretty good sign that you shouldn't be a part of that project. You were expecting to make money, but you weren't going to pay it back to the people who, like, helped you make the thing happen. It's pretty crap, guys. Not cool. Like, you... You can find people who will do stuff for you for free. I don't think it's cool that people do that. Especially when they are hoping to make money off of it. Um, but, yeah, the social contract would say, <laughs> can I do this? This might be risky. Ooh, I did it. Yeah, the social contract there would dictate that, um, let me get out. There it is. Cool. Would dictate that you're gonna give a cut to everybody who helped you make the thing, and if you don't, like, gross, dude. Um, in fact, it should, in most cases, it should go without saying, but even if it is said, contract. Like, even if there's no payment right now, you guys gotta get it in writing for later. Because once money comes into the picture, things get real messy really fast. So it's very important to, um, to have all of your terms and agreements written down. Like, it doesn't even need to be an official legal contract, just a piece of paper. At the very least, in a pr any project where money might happen, just a piece of paper that says, like, this is what we're gonna do in the future, so that, you know, if they don't do that, you have a way to deal with it. Which is through the courts, unfortunately. And I know people are like, oh, it's a scary, it's a legal thing. It's like, it doesn't matter if you're making money off of it or not. Many free projects still uh, dip into a lot of legal stuff. Like the amount of fan projects where like I come on and I'm like, okay, you guys are doing a really big ambitious thing with an IP you don't own. And in some cases they're, you know, they have underage labor. They have people in their teens doing animating or storyboarding or something. And I'm like, okay, do have you talked to a lawyer? And the answer is often like, oh, we talked to, you know, this person's aunt or whatever who's a lawyer. And it's like, okay. I, I'd like, you know, maybe you should make sure that they're, like, specifically versed in copyright law. Um, pick those up. Get that turkey. But yeah, you should definitely talk to a lawyer just to see, like, where you stand. Because the reality is, in most cases, if you are using someone's IP, then uh, they can they can get you at any time. You have no rights to the project or the work you're doing, unfortunately. And I could go into like the details of like what to look out for, but I'm not a lawyer. I don't want people to be following my advice. I generally, if I get into that conversation in a project, I will say my understanding. To make it clear, like, you know, this is... I will say, people who think that just because they're not... A, people who think that it being non-profit... <laughs> yeah, it's very good. Um, A, people saying that it's non-profit, that does not protect you. Non-profits can also commit copyright infringement and be sued for it. B, making money does not inherently mean you're... Uh, no longer nonprofit. 
Nonprofit just means you do not make profit. Any profit you make would go back into production or into the company. You don't make a profit off of it. You don't have a profit motive necessarily. So, uh, nonprofits, like nonprofit charities, have budgets for marketing. They have budgets to pay talent and workers. You know, they do work off a of volunteer quite often, and that's okay. But that's all I'm saying is that um, a lot of people would be like, we can't, we can't pay anybody because then we'll be in legal hot water. It's like, no, you're in legal hot water regardless of whether you pay people or not. Using that as an excuse to not pay people is not super cool. But again, not a lawyer. Don't quote me on that. That's just my understanding from what I've read on the subject because a lot of it pertains to my work. Uh, we got dialogue. Listen to me, Magicist. I know you're aiding him in his quest for the ultimate potion. Ultimate? What? I haven't seen him since he fled to join the Order of No Quarter. Ah, oh, chemical trickery. You can't fool me. I know he plans to use the potion to beguile you. Wait, me? What are you insinuating? Oh, someone's coming. No, oh, it's the panicky pushover. Is winning the Magicist's heart worth betraying your allies? <laughs> what? Where in the world did you hear that? This might be different than the voice I used before. I didn't bother looking it up. Sorry. And I know how you plan to gather ingredients. The only thing worse than a deranged alchemist is a traitor. Do what you will with the order, but none threaten the Enchantress and live. Alright. This first, like, real combat. Ooh, yeah, this is... I'm glad they didn't go with, like, the arcing weapons, which is often what happens when they have a thrown thing in uh, retro games. It was, like, a big problem in a lot of games, where, like, you would have, like, a weapon that's thrown, like, a rock or something, and it would just arc over enemies because that looks more realistic, but it's like, that makes it so much less usable, my dude. Ah! No, back away! Go away! Stop it. Stop it. Nope. Hey, there we go. <sighs> but, uh, yeah, that was a big tangent. I, that's the big thing is, like, I have a ton of ideas for projects, and they'd be very, it'd be very helpful to have other people working on them, but in reality, if I can't pay other people, I don't really want to bring them onto the project. Even though I know there are people out there who are totally willing to. But yeah, for both the reason of, um, it doesn't feel cool to do that. I think people should be compensated for their work no matter what skill level they're at. But also, on a more cynical side, you get what you pay for, so if I'm not paying people, then I'm not gonna get great work out of them necessarily. Like, that's not to say people haven't donated great work to projects before, but... Um, in most of the projects I'm in where people don't get paid, the vast majority of them are hoping to just gain experience and don't even understand the basics yet, and that's not really what I want in any project that I'm doing, personally. Whatever works for you guys, I'm not trying to shame anybody, you know, I'm sure that they can, you can get good work to happen. I just don't want to do the extra work to get someone else to do the work that I need. Okay. Halt! No weapons allowed! Wait a minute. Let's just pretend I don't recognize you. Or, let's just pretend I don't recognize you and you go safely on your merry way. This doesn't have to get messy. Don't show your creepy bird face around here again, freak! Halt! Maybe you didn't hear me through that mask. Okay. I already had this conversation, pal. You're not supposed to be here. I get lost before I lose my patience. Will he fight me if I try it again? Mm hmm? Okay, okay. Oh! Hello? Psst. I have like that. I'm still guarding your secret entrance. But I lost the key. The locksmith should be here in a week or two. You can wait until then. Blow it up. Come on. There we go. 
Bam. Bam. Ba bam. Explode. Do it. Nice. Oh, geez, sorry. Well, I guess I'm canceling the locksmith appointment. Uh, this was the house I grew up in. Whoops. Well. Sucks to be you, I guess. Oh, that looks, looks like a secret over there. Yeah, it is. Whee! Um, oh. Where am I? Where am I at? Whoa, whoa. Oh, that's where I am. Okay. <laughs> Mona, we have a big uh, problem on our hands. We've been found out. Uh, the Black Knight thing. Yeah, Magisys filled me in. Don't worry, your beak. That fool has nothing on us. Look, all we need to worry about is those final ingredients. We're stuck languishing here in obscurity until then. Yes. <laughs> the essences. I shall pay our friends a little visit and, uh, <laughs> borrow them. Right, and while you're doing that, I'll keep researching ways to get more... bang for our buck. Know what they say. The bigger the explosion, the better the alchemist, yes. <laughs> Let's get to work. Oh, here we go. Woo! Giggling. Who's she giggling though? Whoa! <laughs> These lips never cease to both amuse and uh, oh. <laughs> truly a dizzying display of technology. <laughs> anyway, welcome back to the potionarium. So, what are we working on? Uh, let's do a little shopping. Hmm. Uh, it could be good. Hmm. Ah, yeah, I like that. Um. Oh, I should have. Oh, that's fine. Research? Okay, I have a bunch of new toys to sign, but we still have to build them. I need 40 cypher coins for materials. Look, I can't build this stuff on a shoestring budget, so until you have those coins, we're kind of stuck. I only got 31. Hey, what's up? Oh, I know his magicist is helping us. She's really risking her neck. Oh, that's the magicist. I see. Pick up your special delivery. Wanna take a look and show the bill? Uh, sure. Oh, that's how you get the fish. Oh, hello, Plague Knight. Black Knight tried to interrogate me, but I think I threw him off the trail. Whether it's business or personal, don't worry. Your secrets are safe with me, Plague Knight. Anyway, yes, of course. Uh, you'd like potions, would you? Can get those. Increase your alchemy power bar for more mechanics. Let's get this. Because I think I was out. Ah, uh, Plague Knight, my good friend. A moment of your time. <sighs> How can I help you, Percy? I've run out of paper, and I can't fit any more ballistic formulae on my hoof. I'm in desperate need. Huh. You need glue as well. I know we can make some. I know how we can make some. <laughs> oh, I thank you, but uh, just the paper will do. And by the way, you're looking a bit forlorn lately. Maybe I'll repay your kindness with some love advice. <laughs> My ally, that's three sheets of paper you've brought me. Five hundred gold for each. What, what is this folly? There's some sort of musical notation scribbled all over it on both sides. There's nowhere for me to write. Useless. Into the trash bin it goes. <laughs> Was he talking? I must break it out. Oh. What was that? What was that? Ah, everyone works so hard out here. And Ulog want to help, can help, can make music. But got tired, fell asleep. When awake, forgot almost all music. So sad, poor Ulog. He'll think very hard. Maybe remember more music. Then I help. I help science. Oh, spend a long time to remember music. I can play good song. It'll be a good treat. So, Dr. Knight, 
Ooh, I'm ready. You listen to some music now? Uh, not right now. Want to help? Oolong is no good fight. Get dent in head tubes. I don't know if I'm the... Uh, Oolong seems like a nice guy, but... Uh, I don't know if I trust that. Uh, he seems quite... Quite large and dangerous. Alright, Trouble Pond. See what we get here. Whoa, 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 whoa. The wrong button. There's definitely nothing here, boss. Did my most thorough check. Should we move on? Whoa. That's not what I meant to do. Uh, can I do it if I do this? Maybe here. Nope. Nothing. Oh, well, um... Ooh, which should we go to first? Uh, we'll do Spectre Knight. For science! It's for your science. Oh, can't even. I guess you can move up a lot higher, so. Makes sense that you wouldn't necessarily need those. Hey, stop it. Ooh. Oh, come on. Give me the, give me the good. Oh, whoops. Well, that's not what I meant to do, but that works. Uh, oop. That's not. At least not want not. As they say, in a... Uh, I don't know, this is a sweet tie, I think. Yeah. This is love it. She said that. She was originally played by Angela Lansbury. You know, rest in peace. Katie was a national treasure. Mrs. Potts herself. Very nice. Very nice. Y'all see Glass Onion? It's a good movie. Uh, she made a cameo in it. It's right at the beginning, so that's not like a spoiler. So did Sondheim, actually. Which means that it's the last... Thing that either of them was really in. It's crazy. If you think about it. And I recommend you do. Thinking is very useful. Helpful and important. Back here. There we go. On the rest of the Hey! Get out of here. Oh boy! Uh, um, what else? I got a big trip coming up, so I probably won't be streaming during the holidays. But I'll also be working on some stuff for the stream. Which is, uh... I will probably get another couple streams in before then, so I'll wait to announce it. But yeah, it's some something pretty exciting. I'm very excited to, uh... Excited to get it set up but, you know, still gonna be quite a bit of work in preparation. Um, I can say it's tabletop sort of stuff. It's not necessarily gonna be me, like, making a game or anything, although I would like to do streams of that at some point. Just to, like, kind of hang out with y'all and, like, get your, get your advice. Get your feels on what uh, you'd want to do in a, in a game. The thing with designing a game, though, is like, while we can design the initial prototype, uh, playtests greatly change a game. Like, the, the rules of thumb that I've found so far in playtesting, um, the rule of thumb I've heard for a complete game is 70 to 100 playtests on average for a complete game, right? And honestly, that sounds kind of low to me, but I'll, uh, I will trust that that is accurate to the, at least what games have been published. Um, and, ow, oh, dip. Uh, the thing I've noticed in my playtests is that the game... No matter what your initial prototype is, within the first 10 playtests, 
your game is probably going to change radically. Like, it is not, you are not going to end up with the same game that you started with at all. And that's fine. Like, that's the point of playtests, is to see... Let's get it to meet. Yeah. Well, he was gonna eat for dinner. He's still hungry. He ain't got no guts to eat with him, Just teeth. Gotta keep him sharp. Um... Buddy... I don't know what this guy's got going on. I assume he's alive, but all we see is his plague mask. I don't think he cares about what what hand flip what he puts in his mouth. Maybe he cares too much. How do we even know he's eating it? Maybe he's turning into some kind of health potion. Distilling it into something safe to consume. Uh I'm realizing that maybe the side path was the other way. Well, that's fine. Not a hundred percent run, just an any percent. Like this. Ooh, there are weird angles. Ooh. Um, but yeah, it was interesting to me during the jam listening to other people's progress. Yeah. Okay. Uh, it's incredible to me how many people weren't playtesting. They said they were playtesting. Uh, rude. Um, but what they were actually doing was just playing the game by themselves. And in most cases, it was a game that was meant to have multiple, pe mm, multiple people. So while I'm sure there is information you can glean from uh, playtesting your own game multi-handed or however you do it, you're missing out on the core benefit of playtesting, which is uh, the core benefit of playtesting to me is getting to see how people react and interact with your game. Like, uh, I don't have any more files, so I just kind of gotta go. Uh, oh, I guess that is a side way. I'll go that way because it's different. Uh, Shovel Knight route. Like, yeah, the if you're doing it yourself, all you're getting is, like, do the mechanical things work? Are there any obvious problems, right? But, like, getting to hear other people's perspective of, like, what they think of the game, what they're immediately thinking as they're playing it, that is incredibly valuable information for you as the designer. So, for me, I don't bother with the, like solo playtesting because it's like anything that I could gain, gain from solo playtesting will happen in uh, playtesting with like real players because like if there's mechanical problems they'll pop up they'll tell you they'll be like oh this is broken or if they don't tell you like you'll notice you'll notice as they're playing like oh that was broke oops um, yeah, you don't get that, and in at least one case, and this isn't, to be clear in this anecdote I'm about to say, I'm not saying that this person was doing a, uh, a bad job. Again, it's like, everybody has their own process, right? I personally, because, you know, both A, I play games to socialize, and B, um, I, I play games to socialize and to experience new systems. Uh, especially when it comes to tabletop, I socialize. And th thus, my games are very social heavy. God damn it. I'm having a terrible time with this. Ugh. It's just really hard to get the, get the bomb jump at the right time. <laughs> so yeah, the social interactions people do, and especially because my game is like a hidden, super hidden information game about communication, I couldn't do it on my an own anyways because I need to see if the communication rules work and if they're parsable. 
So, but uh, the anecdote I was gonna say is at least one person was like, I'm not sure if I'm gonna play test it with anybody else. And I was like, it's always good to get an outside perspective. I would say it's better to get an outside perspective than an in inside perspective in most cases. Um, but you know, that's my own personal value statement. It's not objective or anything. Uh, but yeah, I, I, um, I said that, and then they did, er, uh, the person did do a playtest. I don't know if it was because of my convincing or someone else. I'm not gonna necessarily take credit for it. Um, but yeah, I was there for that first playtest, and we, meet within the teach, found a game-breaking problem that was not coming up in the single-player uh, thing that, you know, the person was doing. So... That's, what, that's all I'm saying, is that, like, that is the benefit. Within one playtest, you will immediately tell if your game is even viable in its current state. And within ten playtests, you'll be able to hopefully find the core gameplay loop. I would say... If you can't find the core gameplay loop within, um, I'll say in a minute. Son of a- Ah! Can't get this! Ah. I'm gonna try the other path, because I just cannot get this jump. Um, but yeah. Within one, within one playtest, within the first three playtests, you'll encounter any of the obvious game-breaking bugs that are in your game, whether it's tabletop or not. Like, there, you can have bugs in any kind of game. The only real difference between tabletop and video games is that in tabletop, um, in video games, the rules, what would be the rule book in the tabletop, is the code, right? So, uh... Yeah. There we go. And then within the first 10 play tests, you will be able to find your core gameplay loop. I would say my rule of thumb is that if you do 10 play tests and you still haven't found a core gameplay loop that people enjoy, unless it's a, a really heavy game, Obviously, like, I'd say maybe go 20 to 30 for one like that that's probably going to have already, like, two to three times as much playtesting as a lighter game. Um, like, don't throw it away. There's probably still value in the game. It's, it might still be viable in some way. It's just you're going to need to find some distance at that point because you've been working on it for ten iterations already. And it's gonna be, you know, hard to get out of whatever thought process you're in for the current form of it. So just like, if you're at that point, just step away for a while, put it on the back burner, work on something else. Nice. There we go. Oh, it's scary doing that. Um, ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Go away. You know, and then just come back to it later when you have fresh eyes to put on it. Because, like, I think that there's rarely a game idea that isn't viable, but there are certainly permutations of games that aren't viable. And finding the permutation that is is kind of what the early playtests are for. I'm at the point now around playtest uh, six, I had finally found the core gameplay that um, people really liked. Because people liked the concept before, but the gameplay itself was lacking. It just, you know, the, the concept was like, oh, really cool, but the actual game that I was making just wasn't fulfilling on that. So I had to like really rethink that, and I—it was really just a matter of like completely 
changing uh, core gameplay information, which, um, which, uh, uh, <laughs> which, you know, it'll, it's in the blog, you'll see. You'll see when I get around to editing that, which should be soon. It won't be, like, crazy edits. I do want to maybe ne do a more documentary style rather than, like, just straightforward, you know, chronological vlog style. Because there was a lot that went down in the, that process. It, it's one of the bigger games I've made. Though, considering the games I've made before are very light. Like, very light, meant for, like pretty young audiences or like, you know, very broad appeal kind of games. Um, it's still like lower weight kind of game. It's not that heavy. Though at the same time, I want it to be deceptively heavy, right? I want pe because I've had this feedback and I like this feedback because it means that I'm doing exactly what I want to that uh, it's harder than they expect it to be. And people, you know, with good reason, say like, oh man, I think that's a flaw. They, they talk about it like they think it's a flaw, but the reality is that's what I want. I want it to seem like it's a cute, fun game, but then when you actually play it, it's, it's tough. It's not super easy. Granted, it's doable. Like, I'm still at a point where people are able to win in uh, the first of three possible rounds, which I'm fine with. Um, you know what? I never actually switched my powers. Oh good, that fire does not hurt me. Oh, maybe I don't want the fire one right now. Yeah, that's not working out. Hold on. There we go. Um, and that's another thing in playtests, right? Is that... On one hand, everybody's gonna want to share an opinion. Especially, I've been doing most of my play... Well, that works, I guess. I've been doing most of my playtesting in a server with, you know other people who are playtesting, so it's it's mostly designers. There are some players who show up, like people who aren't explicitly game designers, but are generally interested in it because it's a game design centric server. Um, but, yeah, so everybody has a lot of points that are like, you know, I'd change it like this, I'd change it like that, and I'm like, okay, that's very good information, and I do the same thing when I'm playtesting, so I totally get it. But at the same time, I see... Well, I hear what they're saying. Chester? Hey! Lord and a beaker are stuffed in a bag. Chester's always got this swag. Hey, nice relic, pal. You know I could take that off your hands and give you something a little more interesting. Hey, school. Replenish your energy by damaging enemies. Get out of here, get out of here. Oh, so is that how he get, got the relics? I gave them to him? That's cute. But, uh, yeah. Oftentimes, a lot of playtesting is, you know, get all the feedback you can, no matter how much value you think it has in the moment. Just all the feedback you can. Then later, sit, sit down and analyze. Like, okay, which of this seems like a good thing to implement, which of this seems like, you know, not what I'm going for. It's not even necessarily that the feedback that you don't use is bad, right? It's usually pretty good feedback, but the thing is, it'll be uh, misguided, maybe, you know? It's, they don't really, they're, they're trying to think of, like, what could be good for a game in general, but not necessarily what's good for your game. Right? And that's valid. It definitely makes sense to think of it from a, you know, 
is what is a good game. Um, uh, um, but yeah, in a lot of cases, it's like people have been... Um, uh, whoop. People have been giving me advice that... Or rather, feedback. Though, in many cases, it's also meant to be advice. Uh, that I'm not gonna use. But... That doesn't mean I don't like it. And in many cases, I may use it in other games. But in a lot of cases, it's either, you know, something that's cool but not for this game. Or something that... Just kind of is misunderstanding what I'm trying to do with the game. A lot of people think because of the theme that it's supposed to be like a party game. Like a lot of people compare it to Code Words, which is, you know, the most popular human communication game, which is the genre I'm working with. Um, and I get that. Like, of course you're going to draw parallels with the ones that people know, right? Uh, but that's not really what I'm doing. I'm trying to make something that is a little heavier, a little more, you know, uh, a little more theme focused. And I mean, like, narrative theme, not necessarily, like, the game theme. Um, so, yeah, in that way, usually I'll be like, that's, you know, that's not really what I'm going for, but I appreciate it. You know, people seem to think that it's supposed to be random or silly or this or that, and it's like, it's kind of random and silly in theme, but it's not random and silly in mechanics. The mechanics are actually, you know, there's some random elements, but there's a lot of agency in what the players can do. Like, you pull cards, so obviously you don't have 100%, um... 100% control of what you're doing, but at the same time, uh, one of the major pieces of feedback I kept getting is when I had a version that let you do basically whatever you wanted, right? It's like you fi it, you figure out the sentence you want to say, and then you just kind of have to truncate it on a certain way. People said it was too easy, or people said it was, um, you know, it was too complicated. Like, in reality, a ton of agency isn't always a good thing. And I would say, I, I was saying this in the server, um, how much agency you allow a player is pretty important. And in fact, is one of the most powerful tools you have as a designer. Uh, oh, we got dialogue. So, Reaper meets Reaper, but you are no kindred spirit. What have you come to harvest, foolish alchemist? <laughs> if only you could see me yawning under this mask. Ooh, spooky ghosts. <laughs> a mask indeed, as befits a hollow, blustering fool. You hide only from yourself. How tragic that you shall never emerge from cowardice. For here, the story must end. Oh jeez, he's coming. Whoop, there he is. Get him, get him, get him. Now with this one, as fast-paced as he is, uh, if it's anything like the sh Shovel Knight uh, mode, yeah, we want patience. Let him come to us. Other than trying to chase him around, because if we do, by the time we get to him, um, he'll already be off to somewhere less advantageous for us. Ah, jeez. Maybe that strategy was not what I wanted. Yeah, I think that's a big thing I've noticed in a lot of game design discourse is... There's really a big difference between designing games and playing games, and a lot of people seem to think that they un they know good game design because they play a lot of games, and they, they're really good at playing games. They're different skills, though. Like, there are things you will glean from playing games, 
and there are things you'll glean even from like actually designing the games. But there's also so much literature out there, so much helpful literature, in fact. Um. Oh man. Yeah, this is not going great. For me. Uh, I gotta play it smarter. My my strategy is always so like. Oh man. My strategy is always so aggressive. Oh, there we go. Barely made it. Always dancing. Always doing a dance dance. What we get? Bolt. Oh, and we got some cash. Nice. So yeah, there's a lot to be done in study and praxis if you want to get into game design. Um, obviously a lot of people who play games do get into games, but I always find it interesting. Uh, oh, more dialogue. Drop the essence into my dynamo decanter here. Essences are volatile. My breakthrough design stabilizes them. Once the essences are all distilled together, my research is correct, then we can craft the ultimate potion. Spectre Knight has given up to the ghost. <laughs> Great. We need to swing by the lich yard and scrape up some ectoplasm later. Fantastic. Your face. You look different. Is something the matter? Silly. I'm smiling. So what are we working on? Let's buy some stuff. I want that. Um. Not necessarily. Well, yeah. Let's let's get those shots. We'll try it. Maybe it'll be cool. Oh yeah, I like that a lot better. And you get a jump. Nice. Yep, I'll do it. Okay, stand back as I test my hypothesis. Take a gander at your new arsenal. Okay, ooh, there's some good items in here. Ooh, that's nice. Oh, yeah, that's cool. I like that. I like it a lot. Sharps, flats, time signatures. What's all this? Oh, it's right on the back. Oh, I nearly forgot. As I promised, a fitting reward. A romance tip from Sir Percival. Both can easily be distilled. It all comes down to having the proper chemistry. How does this musk man have any luck with romance? Yes, sir. You don't. You know what you should do is, uh, you should try putting a feather in that cap of yours. Wait, uh, I mean hood. But hood of yours? Anyway, yes, of course, uh, you'd like potions, would you? Anything, Anything from you? I see your actions, yes, but hood. Uh, Grandma Swamp. Interesting. I think that was a character I didn't really interact with in the other game. Oh, that guy. Let's get him. Get him. But yeah, it's it's pretty interesting. Come on. It's pretty interesting to see how people approach game design, and in a lot of cases, they try and do it entirely through Praxis, which is important. You absolutely do need to actually, like, 
design games to learn how to design games are things that you'll only... You'll learn your intuition through Praxis. Um... Let's do Praxis. Nice. Yeah, the other one was okay. It was, uh, not quite the combo I want for this level. I think it'll be good. Oop. That'll be good against flying guys like this. Yeah, there we go. Oop. Nice. Oh, you know what? I should... Oh. It's okay. It's okay. Okay. I'm gonna turn off the Cascade thing so I can get three of those. I think that will actually... I'm gonna turn off the Bob. God, you go... Ah, you get sent freaking flying! So far! Um... Yes, yeah, study is also very important, especially considering... People seem to think that you have to study the specific thing, right? And they think that it's just like school, where it's like, you do this to make the game do that to make the game. But it's like, no, there's a lot of very important information that people have gleaned from their own praxis that they're willing to teach. Like, that's what teaching is more than anything, is trying, trying to distill all of your own experiences, your own perspective, and um, what you've learned from all the people before you. Like, it's passing down important lessons that... It's passing down important lessons that you may stumble upon at some point, but the reality is it took a lot of very smart people working a very long time, hundreds of years in a lot of fields, to figure those things out. So, like... It's the old adage of you have to know the rules so that you can break them. And I think people don't get... What that means is, like, you should understand the basic fundamentals of whatever the thing is, as, you know, as far as academics have said it. Um, and then, you can choose to ignore it. That's the thing, is, like, if you at least know what they said, you can ignore it. But the reality is, at least in my experience, and, you know, in the experience of a lot of other people with a lot of experience. Um, when you convince someone who thinks that they can only learn through Praxis to finally study something, or you tell them something that you learned through study, they're often very impressed. And they are often, you know... I don't know, man. I, I don't want to sound arrogant, but it's like... Too often, I talk to people who are even more experienced than me, have a ton of praxis, have made great stuff, and I'm like, yeah, here's a, um, here's something that I studied a while ago, you know, here's like an element that I like a lot, and they're like, wow, that's incredible, like, how did, how did you figure that out, or how did you find that out, and I'm just like, I read it in a book, yeah. That's all I do, is I read, I read like textbooks and stuff. And I learn from those textbooks. And I don't apply everything. And I don't remember everything. I remember stuff that I think is useful and I think is important to the way that I create. But I don't just, um... 
you know, I don't just assume that there's nothing to be gained from study. Because it's just, it's... It just really feels like anti-intellectualism, right? I don't think that everybody needs a formal education. I don't think you need to go to school necessarily. I haven't, I am a college dropout. I went like, you know, to barely any college. And uh, I kind of regret that. But the thing is, when I was 18 going to college, I didn't know what I wanted to do with myself. And I didn't, you know, school had been very disappointing for me. It was not exciting. Nobody in my life, you know, really only one teacher in my life really cared about teaching and loved learning and was able to impart that for me for English. Like, that's the only thing I, I knew, is that creative writing, it's like, that guy was really cool. He made me think that, he made me think I was really into creative writing, which I am. But also, what I was really into was just someone who cared enough to, like, teach the thing. Because in reality now, with, like, how many people there are who have things that they absolutely adore, absolutely care about, sometimes they're hyper fixating on. In fact, quite often. Um, and they teach it to you, like, it's awesome. It's super entertaining, even. Like, that's the thing I think people don't get about learning, is that if you really love a subject, and I mean really love it, a lot of people say that they love something, and they, I think they only think that because they don't actually know what it feels like to really enjoy something. I don't know, maybe, I mean, people say it's like there's different ways to enjoy stuff, and it's like, yeah, I suppose, but I also think that I definitely interact with a lot of people who say, like, this is all I've ever wanted to do in my life, and, like, they just don't engage with it, really. Like, they, they seem to think that the only way to engage with it is by doing, but it's like, you can engage with... Uh, a subject, a medium, a topic in a million ways. You can watch videos about it. You can, you know, read books. You can seek out all sorts of information about it. And if you enjoy the thing, it's not going to feel like work. Even the driest text, if it's a subject that you enjoy, is going to be enjoyable because it's just a subject that you enjoy. But if you are finding that you don't, you know, enjoy that part. I don't think it's that you enjoy stuff different. I think it's that you don't like the subject as much as you think you do. And I'm not trying to be... I, everybody, whenever I bring this stuff up, people think I'm gatekeeping. I'm not. I'm not saying don't do it. I'm just saying, like, be present to how much, how committed you are to the form. You know? If you're less committed than other people, that's fine. Still engage with it. Like, I don't think you need to have a particular amount of commitment or skill. Like, that's a, a thing that I find frustrating with all the, the AI discourse is people being like, now I can finally be good at art. And it's like, the point of art isn't to be good at it. It's, you know, it's a side effect. It's an awesome side effect. Um, plus, like, you know, what is good art, right? We, the, then you get into that stupid argument a million times over and then you get into what is art and as gamers we know all about that um but what um yeah no the point of art is to enjoy the creative process to just, like, find something that you enjoy making. Whether it's, you know, quote-unquote good or not. Like, even if it's unskilled by whatever, you know, standardized metric. Who cares? Are you enjoying yourself? Great. Like, if you're enjoying yourself, do what you're doing, you know? Obviously, you know, find a place to have a healthy relationship with it. Don't just, uh... God, am I gonna have to backtrack all the way? Oh, no. 
like, yeah, don't don't get unhealthily obsessed, and I've, I've done that before, and I'll, I won't recommend it. When I was working on my anime, it's like I got a little too obsessed, and I wasn't eating well, and I lost a lot of weight. And, I mean, I was already pretty underweight from that sickness, I believe I've mentioned on stream, if I haven't. Um, maybe I will someday. Yeah. Ew, it's been a very annoying, tough road. It's especially annoying because it's been, it was kind of thrust upon me by a really bad, bad doctor. Like, my, my health was basically completely wrecked by this idiot doctor. I was in fine health, and now it's like, I'm so much worse off because I was trying to get myself better, and then I was mocked for it by a medical professional. Oh, okay. It did work. I was like, is that gonna work? Although I guess that's what they expect to say. Um, but like, yeah, engage with art on any level, whether it's viewing art, whether it's, um, I think it comes back, right? Uh, whether it's viewing art, whether it's creating art, and don't worry about if it's good. Uh, skills come. Craft improves, no matter what. Like, even the greatest artists are still improving on their craft with every piece. You know? It's, it's not a, uh, it's not a, you get good at it and then you're allowed to do it kind of thing. Really. It's a, you do it because you enjoy doing it and then you just keep doing it. And some people will respond to that and some people won't and who cares about them? Make the art for you. If you worry about what someone else thinks about your art, then you're always going to be unhappy because there's always going to be somebody who doesn't like your art because there's no accounting for taste. And even if it's not a taste thing, it's just like some stupid prejudice thing, which it often is, especially in this day and age. Uh, who cares? You just gotta like forget about them. All right, board in a beaker, stuffed in a bag. Nice. Oh, he's just saying the same thing. Uh, what's this? Some kind of pear? A big boom. Crap, I hit it just slightly too late. Mm. That's okay, but I still have my big boom. Yeah, we'll go with that. Get out of here. Get out of here. Oh, well, probably shouldn't have saw that coming. We'll just load up on those. didn't count the ones that I... Oh, no, I didn't even get that one. Cool. Um... But yeah, all this is to say is that while I'm... I, I'll be critical of people's methods. Don't listen to me. And I'm no authority on the subject. I'm well-read. So I'm pretty well informed about these subjects, and I think about them a lot, so I have a lot to say. I have a lot of opinions, but I'm not an authority. Nothing I say should be any kind of deterrent to what you, to what you do. Um, just work, work on what you love, and work hard on it, you know? Put in your best effort. If someone else disagrees, with what you're doing on, you know, grounds that aren't like, you know, again, bigotry or anything. If you're doing something bigoted, uh, I think that's, I will say, full stop, bigoted art, bad art. Very bad art, if it's from a place of bigotry. That's just, that's non-negotiable. Um, but, Um, yeah, if your art is coming from a place of good faith, faith, and 
you know, good intentions. If you feel like you are saying it, what you want to say and you're expressing what you want to express, then keep it up. 100%. Like, I just, I, I don't know. It's a lot of people don't even want to call themselves an artist, but it's like, if you work on the art, even if you don't put stuff out, even if you don't put out stuff as good as you want it to be, which that's another thing. Most artists are never going to be satisfied with what they do. Because the reality is, it, if you are fully happy with everything you've done, that means you're not improving. So being disappointed in your old work is always a good thing. It means that you've done better. You know? Oh boy, what do we got to say here? Well, yeah, that's what I'm saying, is that the people who value outcome over process, uh, mm, they're not really creating art. They're creating craft, right? If all that matters to them is what happens at the end and that it be high quality, then it doesn't real. there's no real artistic expression happening. Right? If, if caring about the outcome is not the point. Because the point of art is to express yourself in one way or another. And most of the expression comes through the process. And, you know, it's telling that most people who are in favor of AI art are people who themselves have not engaged with art because. I don't think it's a value thing. I think that they have been misled to think that outcome is of utmost importance. They see people who are incredible artists and assume like, well, that's just something that they can do and something I can't do. And so when they see that maybe I could do it using these AI tools, they think now I can be an artist. But it's like, you're not really being an artist. You're being a craftsman. And there are things you can craft, craft with those tools that are cool, right? But, I mean, you know, in AI's case, not really. I have yet to see an AI thing that I was actually impressed by. Uh, um, yeah, the artistry is what happens during the process. The decisions that you make as an artist to, you know, if we're saying, like, drawing, is to put, uh a line here in a particular way, a line there in a particular way, to apply shading in a certain way, like those are the artistic decisions within the process that make it art. And if you're just having a tool do that for you, you will make something, and what you make could even be considered high quality in some spheres. But, yeah, exactly. Or even, I'd go even further than that, and I'd say... It's the difference between designing furniture and building furniture. Because you can get... Uh, you can get plans to build pretty much anything. And if you have the tools and the skill, you can put it together, you know? It doesn't even have to be on an Ikea level. But the artistry in it comes from the choices that you make while you're doing it, right? There's not really any choices to be made with that. There, there's small ones, for sure. Like, I've seen people cobble together IKEA furniture into different stuff. But it's, yeah, it's what you bring to it that shows your perspective. More than anything, because, like, AI art, what you decide to create might show some of your perspective, like that stupid, like, what was it? It's like, a uh, anime girl, anime school girl chopping off a dragon's head AI thing. Which, first off, stupid concept to begin with. I like anime. I like it a lot. And if that's really what that guy's idea of anime is, then I weep for him. He, he's, 
really missing out on the cool things anime can be. Um, but also, yeah, that's the thing. It's like, if you're interested in an outcome, all right, but you're not an artist. It's not art. Like, that's the thing. Is like, calling it AI art is already a misnomer. Because artistry is what happens when a human works through a process of creative decision making. Uh, I would say, yeah, at least, um, it's not inherently that labor is required for art. I, I think that's the thing that you're misunderstanding and, well, okay, maybe not you, but the people in this discourse uh, well, I'm on an ad, so I'll wait until that's over. But yeah, there's a lot I'm gonna say in a second about it. Meanwhile, I gotta take myself to the rats. Rats! I do appreciate it telling me when the ads happen. Oh, crap. This thing's gonna last at all, dude. Okay, um, no, I don't think some level of labor is required for art. And that's the thing, is like, even if you're doing AI art, there is labor involved. Like, you do have to walk it through the prompts for what you want, and you have to do all sorts of, like, it's not labor-free. It's less labor, but it's still work of some kind. I would say work in service of something that has, you know, not a great deal of value, but... It, there's still work involved. Um, but, but, yeah. Um, yeah, it's also, you don't need to have a ton of labor to make art. Look at Bob Ross. His style of painting, the wet on wet style, which he learned from William Alexander before him, uh, takes 20 minutes. Like, he would paint a full painting from scratch. Uh, obviously, he would do... Uh, some people don't realize, like, he did slight prep before that, which is that he would just put what he called magic white on there. Uh, because that's how it... Oh, he's got the breast I see. Um, so the canvas would be covered in white, wet paint, or sometimes black, if it was in, like, night scene or something. Uh, and so the the way that his painting worked is that you would, while the paint was still wet, you would put more paint on it. And the way that it mixed on the canvas is what created the art that it did. Uh, we're about to hit a cutscene, so I'll read that real quick. Plague Knight, you double-crossing constable of crucibles. <laughs> Having fun in your little kingdom? Oh, sorry, I meant kingdom. Oh, this lavish lifestyle is in my blood, peon. Bask in the glimmering grace of a true monarch. As the embodiment of opulence, I demand tribute. <laughs> Let's have that essence. I think I'll keep that next time. Um. <laughs> yeah, it was not a, like, even his first painting in that style, which probably did not look incredible. Oh, I got stunned. Uh, probably did not look incredible was still art and it did only took 20 minutes of work to do that first painting and any of his paintings even the you know better or worse ones or anybody even following along with him who would be making different decisions and doing things differently because of their experience and the way that their hand moves and the way that they choose to mix things they're still making art and it's not that much labor 20 minutes that's it like it, you can just do it and you have to do it in 20 minutes because once the paint dries it's done like with that method it's once the paint is dry you can't do it anymore um so that's what i'm saying 
is like you don't have to do anything crazy to do art. You just have to do something. It's not about... And again, that's the point, is like, the outcome is unimportant. You can, you will make better stuff as you go, and you can make cool stuff in different mediums. But, all that's important is that you are finding fulfillment in making something. That's what makes it art. sequence. I'm supposed to- I am supposed to hit something. Whoa. Hello! Uh. Mona, what were you doing in here? Um, uh, how long were you watching? And you operate my torque lifts unsupervised? I- I just dropped in! I barely saw anything, come on. <laughs> Not some creep. Oh, I guess the shroud is up. Yeah, I dance down here all the time by myself. Big deal. By yourself? <laughs> That doesn't sound like fun. Well, whatever. I don't see anyone rushing to join me. I'm used to the solitude by now. Wish I could help you there, but... Uh, you know, two left for feed and all. Yeah, it's no big deal. Anyway, King Knight's essence is ours, and I discovered that his crown isn't real gold. <laughs> I knew it. Tender indeed. Well, let's get down to business then. Oh, by the way, take a swig of this health potion I made for you. Maybe it'll help. So, what are we working on? Um, okay. But yeah, even, I'm an actor, and live interpretive performance, or even recorded per interpretive performance, um, like the reads I'm doing here, are also a form of art. Like, you don't always have to sit down and work on an eight hour painting for it to be art. Just sitting down and performing or getting up and performing, as is often the case, though in my case I usually am sitting, because I do it all at a computer. Um, that's art too. Like, that's the thing, is like, a lot of it is preparation to do it correctly, but a lot of what I'm doing here is cold reading. I've played this game before, but I don't remember most of these lines. And so a lot of it is decisions made on the fly as well. Like, that's the big thing, is that all you're doing when you're doing AI art is you're telling a computer, just go find a bunch of stuff, th throw it together so it looks more or less like a thing you've seen before. And the reality with that is, while you will make stuff that looks, you know, probably interesting on some level sometimes, you're gonna make mostly stuff that's been seen before. The only original creations can be made by people because we can create something original. The computer is literally taking from old work and just mashing it together. And that's the thing, I don't even necessarily hate AI. I hate that it's called AI because we're not working with AI, we're working with machine learning. Um, and, you know, I don't know. I think people are way more afraid of AI because they've suddenly become aware of it, but like, I've been using chatbots since high school. They have not improved it really that much. They do the same crap that they always did, which is just come up with something that sounds like real language with very little interest in what they're actually talking about. Like, that's why you can run them through circles and get them to say, completely contradict themselves within like two sentences. Because they don't care if what they're saying makes sense or has anything. All they've been trained to do is to find is to emulate language what they're actually saying is immaterial so similarly it's like with art they don't really care if what they're making is good they care if it emulates the thing that you're asking it to emulate and there can be value in that there's many uses for that stuff but what really like more than art because it does frustrate me that people are trying to replace artists, trying to replace, act replace actors and musicians, uh, is when people try and use it for real research. Or, you know, I, I was literally just um, talking, well, no, not talking. I was listening to someone talk. I was listening to, hmm, 
I don't know if I want that. Could be good. Ooh, that sounds fun. Uh, that could be fun too. Ooh, I should have got that maybe. Uh, I'll get this one. Basically, I was listening to a podcast with Luke Crane, who is the creator of The Burning Wheel, which is one of the biggest indie RPGs out there. Much better than Dungeons & Dragons, for sure, in a lot of ways. And in fact, what made 5th edition so big and popular is all crap it, it stole from Burning Wheel. So that, that should tell you how good it is, that they literally had to steal from it to make their own thing good. Uh, let's see. Oh, it's just the witch again. So this is just a replacement for the witch, I see. Oh, whoa! I didn't realize those are. Hold up. Stop. I'm trying to... Yeah, there we go. Um, but yeah, he was on a podcast. You know that one thing, uh, you know one thing that really does it for me? Long hair. Maybe you could take down your hood, little hangout. Anyway, yes, of course, uh, you like potions. Ooh. Um... Um, it's pretty much all the same. Okay. Uh, well, I can just go up this way. Um. But yeah, he was on a podcast talking about RPGs. It was like three hours. It was a super long interview. And it was someone else's podcast. He was just a guest. Um, and he was talking about a tabletop role-playing game that he's been developing that is a historical game set in, like, revolutionary era France. So, like, pretty old. Uh, wow, there's a bunch of cypher coins down these pits. It's a long way down. Only you push them. I'm trying, dude. Stop. I, oh, that, dude. Oh, I got it. Dang it. So, and he's trying to be very accurate. To the point, he was talking about, like, it's really hard to find some information about this stuff. He was, uh... uh no, I still want Bounce Casey. Huh. I don't want that. Long fuse, I think, is what I need. And he was talking about, like... Uh... He was talking about how he literally... Is it the fish? Ah, yes it is. Cool. Um, he literally couldn't find information on this one guy, and so he eventually tracks down the journal of a guy who uh, was with the guy on the battlefield, like his assistant or something? So he finally figured out where this guy was at this particular point in time based on the stuff that he found. And it was a ton of work. It took him like... Uh, over a year, I think, maybe even multiple years. But he's like, yes, now my game will be more informed. And this guy comes back with, um, have you tried using ChatGPT? To which he says, uh, the guy's like, no, it's like, if you ask it, you know, if I, it's 1870 in, uh, in the UK, what do I see? And it'll describe stuff, and it's like, but his point was, I'm on projects that are developing AI, and they're very dumb. Like, he, as a person, actively working with AI, professionally, agrees that AI should not be used as a research tool. Because, as he says, it's not being fed good stuff. It's being fed the garbage from across the internet. So if he used it, like, it'll tell you stuff. It'll tell you, like, oh, this is what it was like in England. Nothing, it doesn't care about it, it being accurate. That's not how it works. All it cares about is giving you something that looks like a correct answer. It's not about whether it is a correct answer, it's about whether it looks like a correct answer. Right? Um... So what he said is that 
if he used that, he would basically have to double check everything it did and it would in the end just be redundant because he'd have to research all of it anyways. It'd be a waste of his time. And it's like, yeah, I'm glad that's not only is he someone who's experienced in research to say that, but someone who's experienced literally in AI projects, in tech. He agrees. And like most of the smart people I know in tech, right? They say that it's like, uh, what is it? Rim from Geek Nights, which is one of my favorite podcasts. He has been a full tech professional in New York City for his pretty much his entire adult life. I mean, he was in a, another area at one point. Um, and he is, you know, a senior product manager at this point. Like, he's been in there for a long time. He knows what's happening in tech. And he said, like, when a lot of the AI stuff first popped up, uh, they... Or no, I think he might have been talking about NFTs. But regardless, like, he's also said this about AI. The, the, like... He also is critical of AI, but he said that when one of these super trendy new things in stuff that's getting, you know, thrown about everywhere, like NFTs, or just like cryptocurrency in general, he did panels. Like, he will sit with his team and figure out, it's like, is this a viable thing? You know, do, is this going to help us in any way? Is it, does it have any inherent value? And in most cases, when it, especially when it's come to AI, NFTs, and anything crypto, the determination from multiple tech professionals has been no. And that's the thing, he's, he works in finance. And I know a lot of finance people like adore this stuff for some reason because they don't recognize that, in most cases, they are direct pump-and-dump schemes. Like, not even hidden. They will literally post tutorials for how to do a pump-and-dump scheme with their crypto. Um, but, like... Yeah, no, he... If it had any value, they would be using it. But it doesn't, because it's ridiculous and kind of useless. And AI, you know, it could eventually be useful. Oh, that's unfortunate. Apologies for you, Mal. You'll have to catch up on it later. But that's the thing, is that while maybe one day it will be worthwhile, it's just not there yet, you know? I don't think crypto or NFTs have any value. The, the concept itself literally is only there for creating speculative value. It doesn't have any inherent value at all. Oh, son of a bitch. Yes, my guys. For that. Oh, no. I wasted some. Um. And we'll go to this. And then we'll go back to the village real quick. And then I'll take a break. Oh, it's an off spoiler. Um. Yeah, no, that's who I trust. Is the people who actually know what they're talking about when it comes to finance and tech. And the ones who the ones who are just into finance, the gambling addicts who get NFTs and crypto thinking that it's going to be, you know, a bigger thing later, the people who play the stock market like it's a slot machine. I don't listen to those people because they make bad financial decisions because they're treating it like a get-rich-quick scheme, and it, the way they do it, yeah, it basically is. And the way it's designed, yeah, it kind of is. And like any get-rich-quick scheme, you're not going to get rich. You're just going to spend a lot of money slowly thinking that you're going to get rich. Ah. So yeah, that's the larger thing, is I don't... I don't think AI... I think AI art 
its greatest harm is that it furthers the false narrative that art is about outcome, which a lot of people think it is. My roommate's kid. Literally, I, I heard him on Fortnite talking about art, and he was like, yeah, I don't like art because I'm not good at it. And it's like, that's not... What's about, man? It's about doing the thing. It's about finding a thing you like to do and, you know, making a thing. Being good at it shouldn't even factor in. The outcome, frankly, unimportant. Like, it's good to look at to know, like, how you can try and improve yourself and how you can challenge yourself for the future. So there is value in that, but the, the value is not in how good you end up making the thing. The value is in the experience that you enjoy from the, uh, from the thing, you know? Hiya, Plague Knight. I bet you'd be just, um, stellar at physics. You're good at math, right? Anyway, uh, uh I'll save up for that, actually. Okay, did not get a ton from that. But yeah, that's the larger thing. And that, that's the thing for me and so many projects I'm on. So many people are so focused on like, okay, here's a script, let's get it done. And it's like, it's not... What's up? Oh, I don't have that yet. Like, that'll have something made. But like, in reality, most of the projects I'm on that go that way, they never really do, like, they never get much, you know? There's not much in the way of, like, response because there's just, like, not much behind it. When you work with other people, when you collaborate, when you, like, you know, make an enjoyable process for people to work with in, it shows. It shows in your work. And people respond to it. So if you want a response, if you care about outcome, you know, th there's so many times where... Um, there's so many times where the way somebody made something is far, far more interesting than what they actually made. You know, like, I think there have been sculptures made where it's literally like they just put a rock under a dripping, like a water drip, like a single drip of water every couple seconds, and just a moving where it's at every you know, like a week, every week or so, and just letting it erode and moving it so that it erodes into particular shapes. And while at the end, all they have is something that you probably could have carved, right, in like, not that much time, or you could have cast molded out of concrete or something, what's interesting about it is how it was made. The process is way more interesting than the outcome. Um, I don't know, man. It, uh, no means to condescend or anything, but it is very clear the way that AI art guys talk about art that they were never going to be an artist to begin with. And it has nothing to do with their ability. Anybody has the potential to make art. Having the potential to make greatly skilled art, I mean, that, you know, takes time. I believe that anybody can make art of great skill and craft if they put the time in. But that's, again, not what's really important. Um, so, yeah. More than anything, it's just clear that they they don't get it, because they are talking about stuff like outcomes. And I don't think that it is a different value thing. I think it is that they're just not looking at art... I don't want to say correctly, but, like... I think that they're really missing out engaging with art the way that they are, because they're missing the core enjoyment of it. Being able to look at a piece of a work and say, I made that, can feel nice, temporarily, but being able to spend time making something 
creating connections in your mind, making creative, interesting decisions. That is what is fun about art. That's why people do art. Some people may do art because uh, at the end they have a cool picture. But the reality is that the people who do it well and do it a lot are the people who just like doing it. And in general, I think that's something that a lot of people are, are missing out on. There's too many people I know who are like, how do I do this? I can't find time to art. I can't find motivation. And I'm like, don't do it then. Like, you only have so much time if you don't want, like, if you're literally like, I can't, you know, I don't want to make art right now. I don't have motivation to do that. Don't. Listen to yourself. Your body and your mind are telling you, like, I don't want to do this. If you're not going to enjoy the process, like, I was, I don't know if, you're, if one is still watching, but we were talking about music and making and, like, learning music. And the big point I had is that it doesn't matter how long you practice it. Um, you have to actually enjoy the process. Because if you enjoy the process, you're going to do it more. A. And B. A, you're going to enjoy it more. And B, uh, it's not going to get fun later. Like, there's not a point where you're great at something and it suddenly becomes enjoyable. It's enjoyable from the beginning because people who like doing it like, will continue to do it. And the people who are best at something are the people who just do it because they like doing it. Right? So if you're having trouble finding the time to do this thing and you're, you know, you're struggling... You're struggling to ever enjoy it and you're just like... I just don't like doing it. I want to be good at it, but I don't like doing it. It's like, then you sh probably shouldn't do it, man. You're just, like, kind of harming yourself. And, like, what kind of life is that? Where you end up eventually being great at something. But, uh... But you just hate doing it. Like, it, it's... It, no matter how good you are, it's never easy, right? It's, there's things about it that will become easy, but it's it's always gonna be hard. It gets easier. There's parts of it that you start to understand and do better. But it's never easy, right? Same with exercise. I love to exercise. I'm in good shape because I enjoy doing it. If I didn't enjoy doing it, I would totally get it. I totally understand why so many people are out of shape. If you didn't like doing it, it sucks, actually. Like, it doesn't really... <laughs> like, it doesn't feel necessarily great. It is a lot of challenge and struggle. And even in my best shape, which I am in now, and have been in different great shape, which again, that's another thing. It's like, right now I'm very lean, and I'm in great shape. And before, I was very bulky and in great shape, but in both cases, I was in really good shape. I just had different goals. Again, that's what I'm saying. is like, it's not... It's not about a single particular outcome. There's no particular, like, this is really good. Because that's not how it works. Stuff will be well-crafted, highly skilled, but the stuff that's interesting is often very unskilled. There's many things, there's so many, like, different people I've seen, artists who draw or, like, act or make music, who make it pretty unskilled, in fact. Some of my favorite stuff, some of my favorite performances are from people with zero acting training, who are not even taking it seriously, they're just doing it for fun. And I love it. I think it's awesome. Um, oh, I can just do that. Hold on, I'm gonna... Um, crap, I can't remember how to turn off my... Hot key paddles. Like, or like some of my favorite music is stuff that is not really skilled. They clearly don't understand music, like, on a theory level or anything. You know? Or, like, maybe they're not a great singer. Maybe they're not... Like, Yotam Perel, 
right, who is an animator, lazy muffin, lazy pillow, whatever you've seen him uh, called. You know, he's had different names on different platforms. He's also a musician. And his albums, uh, Silly String and Erase Your Dust, are like two of my favorite albums. And in them, he sings. And he's not an incredible vocalist. His tone, I'm sure he would admit, is, you know, not like beautiful by most standards. But he's, you know, on key. And he's making the sounds he needs to to, you know, fit in with the other music to sound really interesting. And it's, again, it's not about how good he is at the particular act. It's about how he crafted the music. He composed the music in a way, and he's singing in a way that fits with the music that he composed. All of the creative decisions he made means that even with, you know, quote-unquote, less skilled singing, though, I mean, even being on keys, pretty skillful compared to a lot of singers. Um, like, it still sounds incredible to my ear because I just love hearing the melodies he's come up with and how it interacts with the harmonies and the different instrumentations. And yeah, he could have used, you know, you could use AI to make it sound perfect, make it sound like literally Michael Jackson, one of the best singers in popular music. Ah, crap. I did that in the wrong order. But that wouldn't make it better. And in fact, I would say it'd make it worse. I think that the fact that his vocals are the way they are is an integral part to what makes the music what it is. Because you can tell that he was making what he wanted to make. You know? Maybe he would have wanted it to be sung by a stronger singer. Maybe not. Son of a... Mm. I'm not here to say it. But he made the music that he wanted to make and he put it out so that other people could enjoy it. And that's largely with my anime, right? It's gonna cost a lot of money and I'm gonna have to get other people to watch it to make money back so that I can make more of it. But that's not... At no point is my actual goal to get other people to watch it. If other people watch it, cool. Awesome. That could feed my ego, for sure. And it will feel good if someone says that they like it. Like, I'm not gonna pretend like I'm a robot. I totally will enjoy any praise and probably feel hurt by some of the criticisms. I can't deny that. I'm a person. But my, the reason I'm making it and, you know, going to, at great expense, make it, is because I want to watch it. It's in my head, and it's my favorite show. So I want it to be real, so that I can see it. That's all I care about. And the process itself is the closest thing I have right now to watching it, and I love it. So overall, I just think people who are outcome-focused in art are robbing themselves of what makes art enjoyable. Having a cool finished piece is definitely a benefit and can feel good, but the true enjoyment for art, the reason people love it and do it, is because the process is enjoyable for them. And if it's not, don't waste your time with it. And I'm not saying you're wasting your time because you're not making good stuff or you're not supposed to do it. But like, there's something out there you will enjoy doing. And that thing you should be doing over something that you're trying to force yourself to do that you're not enjoying doing. Ooh, what's this? Mwah. Let's do it. I don't know. And the larger problem with AI art, frankly, like, I wouldn't even care if it didn't 
if it wasn't being fed from the artwork of people who did actually spend a lot of time. That is pretty disrespectful. And I don't think... The only way you can deny that is if you do have a, like, a problem with artists. And you don't value them. And that's been shown time and again to be the case. A lot of the proponents of AI art, their argument is that artists are gatekeeping somehow. That you can gatekeep someone by just, you know, being more skilled. That's not how gatekeeping works at all. Had that argument recently, but I'm not going to get into it. Um... Like, yeah, it's not about that, man. Nobody, literally nobody is stopping you from getting art. It's not gatekeeping because you're not being kept out. You can make art. It's not going to be, you know, it's not going to look exactly the way you want it to immediately. Because that's just not how it works. I think I'll stick with that, actually. But you can make it. And you should make it. And if you don't enjoy that, you do something else. It's fine. Not everything has to be for everyone. And in fact, in terms of art, there's tons of options. No. No. Like, you can make... Boing? Um... Yeah, it's never going to. That's the point, is that if you want to be an artist, you kind of got to come to terms with the fact that if you're focused on outcomes, you're always going to be disappointed because the outcomes are never going to be what you really want. You have to just enjoy the process. And every artist, every successful artist, whether that's because they're very well respected by other artists or because they're very financially successful, understands that. That it's not about... It's not about the outcome. They have to worry about the outcome because we live in a financial world, and often that is what dictates whether or not they're going to be able to survive or make more art. Um, but that's not what they enjoy about it. And if they did, they would not be making very good art. <laughs> that's... yes. That's very good. I like that. Um, yeah, outcomes and incomes. Just don't focus on what's coming. Focus on what you're doing now. Don't focus on what's going to be coming later. Yeah, I don't know. I I think it's also because I was in that position, too. I was like, man, I wish I could just make... I could just draw exactly what I want to. I wish I could perform exactly the way that I want to. And I was just super unhappy as an artist. But I had this creative drive that made me want to, you know, create. By any means necessary. Maybe it's genetic. Maybe it's just, you know, how my brain works. I come from a long line of artists. My mother is like a... She can paint very well, and my father is uh, like a you know, classical guitarist. Uh, one of my brothers followed in his footsteps. One of my other brothers is like now doing filmmaking, and he's an incredible filmmaker. His short film, which I shared in the Discord server, um, which I'll pop up the link and chat that so you guys can go check it out. Yeah, go watch uh, Dryer Sheets that I linked there from my brother, Gabriel Henneman, who's a uh, Brooklyn-based screenwriter and filmmaker. Uh, I believe he mostly calls himself a screenwriter. Or even, uh, he says playwright as well. He, he considers himself mostly a writer, but he did do this short film, and it's really good. Like, I was... 
nervous, honestly, because I'm like, I'm really critical, as you guys can probably tell from watching this stream at any point. Uh, so I was like nervous, like, oh man, I don't want to be, I want to be nice and supportive, but like, if it's not good, I don't know what I'm gonna be able to say. But nah, dude, he did an awesome job. It's really, it's so funny. It's so, like, it's just really interesting, like, storytelling. There's all these layers to it. I'm pretty sure I was talking about it on the last stream because I just watched it. Um, but it's like, yeah, it's like, it's so, God, I can't even describe it. It's like so many layers of like, it's like, it starts out as like a kind of straightforward satire of a B-movie. Um, come on. That's not, but come on, why would it go that way? Are you, are you bloody I don't want to use the... Um, maybe I need to change it to this. Yeah, because the cascades were giving me issues before with the bouncing stuff. That's what it was. Okay. But yeah, it's like, it starts off as like a satire of B-movies. And then, where all of the characters are played by my brother. Hmm. So, oh, this is tricky. I want to get to the end of this level before I take a break, so... Um, so it starts off as a, a B-movie kind of satire, kind of parody, where everybody is played by my brother. Then, it transitions with it, within the story. It, like, doesn't be like, this is new. It's, like, as part of that B-movie story, there's now a second character played by my brother's twin. And then, those two characters decide to do a play about what happened at the beginning. So we get to see the same scene again through the lens of the characters with characters that were played by the same actor now being played by that actor's twin. Oh my god. Whew! This is very hard. Much harder than Shovel Knight. I guess it's still is Shovel Knight, but you know what I mean. Shovel Knight run. So it's it just adds all these layers and it like it like becomes like it's kinda lampshading, but it becomes like a distillation of what happened at the beginning. And it's still like a story, and it's like this there's a moment in it where something happens that happened, it ha something happens in the play, but then it's actually happening in the movie, and it's something that happened at the beginning of the movie to a different character played by a different actor who looks very similar. I won't say identical, though they are identical twins. I can tell them apart, but I feel like it's probably really surreal for anybody who didn't grow up with them and can't tell them apart. Um. And it just, like, suddenly breaks you out of it, like... is this moment of, like, that happened in the play. No, that happened in real life. No, that happened in the movie. It's not real life, and it's just, it suddenly snaps you into, like... What is reality? It, it, it's like, it adds so many layers of fiction that it becomes hyper-real. It's awesome, dude. It's so clever. And it, you can tell it's because, again, it, it comes from perspective. He has an interesting worldview. And not for nothing, but, like, I've always said that, like, my brothers are the funniest people I've ever met. Like, my two brothers, who are twins, um, when they get together, they are the funniest people on the planet. And granted, maybe part of that is because I did grow up with them, and my... Uh, my sense of humor was formed growing up with them. But it's, 
It's so funny. I busted up laughing. Alone, I was laughing out loud. I, I feel like anybody who consumes a lot of internet content knows how unlikely it is that you'll actually laugh audibly when you're watching something alone. Though, not for me personally. I know that it's common, but I very do actually laugh out loud on my own very often. So, I don't know, maybe that, that skews my, uh, my point. That's all I'm saying, man. Like, all he had, he got a camera. In fact, he might have borrowed his twins camera since he was already using it for, uh, you know, performance videos. I, I, they're videos of music. Um, I don't, I, I would call them, pers I would say music video personally because they are videos of music, but I know that those have like particular social connotations of what a music video is. So yeah, I'll say performance video for now, but it's, I, I think they're music videos. Um, God damn it. Oh, ah, oh, this sucks. Oh, there's so much to deal with. Um, and he filmed it all in my dad's basement. And he uh, filmed it with my family. You know, he got my aunt and uncle, and he got my grandma is in there. My grandma killed it. She's not like an actor of any kind, but she's like, obviously she's gonna help out her grandkid. She's cool, and she was so funny. Oh man, it, it's, it's like one of the most standout performances in the whole thing. She just does, she just reacts in such incredibly funny ways and incredibly like accurate ways. I really love her performance in that. Really just love the short film in general. Highly recommend it, man. I can't wait to see what he makes next. I gotta read his screenplays, I haven't had the time yet. But he has several screenplays for stuff that he's gonna hopefully produce someday um, on there as well, so I gotta read those. You gotta be kidding me. You're a demolitions expert. You're a day late. Don't just stand there, start blasting, and hop to it. <laughs> I'm afraid I'm not exactly here to help with your dig, but I'm certainly here for demolitions. <laughs> Boom! I should have known you were just gonna clown around. Can't let that happen on my watch. Let's Still want the bounce casing. Do that. Do the sentry because he moves around a lot, so I'll make a move into it. I am. I am doing damage. It's hard to tell with the explosions because you can't really see the uh, flashing colors. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like, there's going to be, no matter what you make, even if you are using certain tools to make it, there's going to be effort involved, and that effort could be described as labor. I, like, for me, you got to, you know, use the, use the labor that's going to be the most fun. And if you have fun doing, like, putting in AI stuff, great. Just don't act like you're an artist for it. It's a fun hobby. It's an interesting activity, sure. But it doesn't make you an artist. It makes you at best a craftsman. And I would say it doesn't take that much to be a craftsman because all you have to do is keep typing in. Th you're just telling somebody, you're being a, a, literally a middle manager for a computer. You're ordering it to do something for you and then just like continuing to do that until you get it correct. That's the same kind of person who thinks that directing is about controlling uh, your talent. I saw somebody say that. I saw a talent say that on Twitter and I was so sad. That's not what directing is. It's, it's pointing people in the right direction. You're directing them towards, you know, a different performance. It's contextualizing. It's not about control. 
any director that thinks in that way is probably never going to get, like, a great performance. Great performances come from contextualizing things for the actor and letting them bring their performance to it. Ah, but I digress. Uh, we'll do this scene and then I'm going to take a break. That insufferable mole knight escaping that sweltering lost city had me dancing for joy. You dancing? That's... I can't even imagine what that looked like. Uh, um, uh, you see, uh, he, uh, mm, yes, preposterous, eh? So, what are we working on? Well, we'll see what we're working on after I get back from break. I'll be our back, so don't go anywhere. Don't touch the internet dial back with more Shovel Knight. Plague of Shadows in just a minute.
Okay, I got some tea. My voice, ugh, I had like the worst, had like the worst, um, yeah, like acid reflux, crunchy throat since yesterday. So I have some mint tea. I would have black tea, which is better, but um, it's got caffeine and it's like seven. I don't want to be up all night. Uh, all right, you already said that. Uh, maybe I'll get enough. Uh, I don't think I got many. Just two. Man, I'm so close. Uh. Oh, I see. Uh, because I jumped the first time when he did that, I didn't get it. He's throwing away the music into Oolong, and Oolong is eating it and doing the music. That's cool. That's fun. Uh, oh, we're going to save up, I think. The problem is I always come to her second after I've already gotten all my other stuff. Something I was just saying to my roommates, talking about our conversation here. Uh, I'll go to the armor outpost. Let me... Nice. Um, oh, I should talk to him. I didn't... I didn't want to go straight to him, but... Looks like we're gonna go past him. Ah, uh, just in time. I set our coordinates directly to a faraway tree of treasure and armaments. First of all, it's completely unguarded. I won't believe you, Percy, but our last direct flight was directly into the ocean. I can't afford another set of waterlogged bombs. You're not frightened. I've quadruple checked my numbers. Just need to change out the torsion rod. That's a cheap fix, only 50 cipher points. A pittance for our institution, yes? Excellent, I'll send for the part. We'll be soaring in no time. Perfect, now that's one beautiful portion rod. Hop aboard and the spoils are as good as yours. Sure, let's see where this takes us. Wah. It's Plague Knight, now's our chance, everyone get him! Ah, uh, Percy couldn't hit the broadside of a barn. You're cornered, lay down your chemical weapons and come quietly. <laughs> Quiet, he says. Total silence. Boom! <laughs> Here's the thing, especially with, like, acting with AI, I'm not super worried about it because my ability... My ability as an actor is in changing my voice often. Obviously, I don't have that many creative ideas, but, like... Even my voice, if someone were to use AI, which I will sue you if you do, so don't even try. Like, but that's a blanket statement that is also posted, uh, pinned on my Twitter account and everything. Uh, yeah. I do not authorize to be used in AI machine learning anything. If I hear that happening, you will be receiving a letter from a lawyer. Um, but I don't just use my speaking voice. I also have a litany of various accents that I use, like Australian, and, you know, Dick Cajon that I've used on many occasions, uh, the various, you know, a sort of British things, the Suffolk, as I call it, which could be applied to a pirate of some sort, though if I did a pirate, I'd do it probably like this now, yes indeed. All of those are things that you can't replicate with AI. If I used it long enough, someone could, but you can't pull it out of my brain and use it. So, you know, you're just not going to get a new voice. You'll get an old voice, but it's like, I can always come up with new voices. I'm not going to run out. There's always so many options that I haven't used. I just kind of default to voices I already know because, you know, it's easier, especially when I'm streaming. 
which is a bad habit. I like to use streaming as practice. So me de defaulting to like a handful of certain voice archetypes is uh, lazy. I need to challenge myself more. That's for sure. Uh, everyone knows the bomb is mightier than the sword. Ha ha ha! Minions, join me! The armor outpost is ours! Whoa! <laughs> You're hearing that rumble? Oh, they're running away. Goodbye. It's the aerial anvil. Looks like a full load of cowards. <laughs> Let's take the things. Oh. Chicken stayed. Psst. Hey, green guy. I'm low with deals. I'll blow you away. Why don't I have a look? Ooh, that's pretty good. I'm gonna have to save one. Ah. Any of these? Oh, hey, travel. Hello, bird person. Absolutely, I'll buy some an Icor vessel. Cool. Let's see what happens then. It's interesting that you meet him so much later in this one. <laughs> they're not cowards. They're chickens. I'm a rooster, sir, and I'm invested in half the town. Do as you must, but I'm unflappable. Hmm. Oh, what's up? Ah, so you're the one who's scaring off all my customers. It's enough to make a haberdasher flip his lid. Hee <laughs> hee, do you do hoods? I could use a blast proof lining on mine. You miscreant hoods. That's not even a proper hat. No structure, no support, no flair. Hats are a waste of felt, old man. They fall off in the wind. Hoods are objectively more utilitarian. Ow, how dare you, sirrah! I demand satisfaction. I bet you. If you insist, bro. Oh, you got me. I didn't realize my health was so low. I guess I did just do that battle, huh? Okay, let's adjust. Uh, I think Cascade Powder will be better for this part of the fight. And we'll do Quick Fuse. Alright. Yeah, I just think it's telling. When people... There's a new big tech thing. And the people who are excited about it are people, are financial people, you know, business people, and not the tech people. That's generally telling that it's just, like, gonna be a big scam. Or if not a scam, it's just gonna be, you know, a lot of... A lot of investment, and not a lot of actual utility. People will find uses, but then finding, you know something for those uses to be used for. That's the big thing, right? As is often the case with all the crypto NFT AI stuff, it's just a, it's a solution waiting for a problem. It doesn't necessarily, like a lot of the applications don't really solve anything. What does AI art solve? People say it solves, you know, it allows people to make art when they're not skilled at it. And it's like, no, because you can make art. You can't make art of that quality, but like that's a luxury. It always has been. You aren't entitled to uh, making incredible art or even having incredible art of your specific thing, right? You can always make art. That's never been held back from any of you. Um, Just need to play this a little smart. Or, you know, business people will say, well, it, you know, saves us money in, like, the quote-unquote useless arts, like advertisements. And it's like, I would say the art, like, that's the thing, is it's because marketing people seem to think that, you know, 
things succeed because of their choices. When in reality, in a lot of cases, the art is a huge reason that advertising works. And in fact, when, as we all know, when uh, advertisers have too, or yeah, advertisers, marketing people have too much say in art, is when, you know, less interesting art happens. Very corporatized art is rarely that interesting. If it is, it's on some ironic level. Or, like, I, I'm a huge fan of, like, Scholastic Utopian, right? But I'm not a fan of it be necessarily because I grew up on it. I mean, maybe that's part of it. I'm a fan of it because it's surreal. It's, like, so corporatized and so... How do I put this? It's, like, so empty in a way... It's, like, so full of objects that have no real substance. I think that's really interesting, and I th it really makes me think, you know? It's cyberpunk, in a way. Whereas, where it's like, it's, even though it's called utopian, it is itself very dystopian. And I love stuff that is very bright and colorful on the surface, but has dark implications underneath. What I hate... Okay, hate's a very strong word. What I dislike is when you have something like that, where it's like something that's bright and colorful, with, and you make it overtly dark, right? Like when people are just like, what if the this character, you know, the Bridge series, where it's like, what if this cute little character, you know, was a super aggressive, swearing jerk? It's like, no, that's not very interesting to me. That's really kind of missing the point. Um, or like something like Pony Island, which I love Daniel Mullins. I mean, you can go back and watch. I loved Inscription. But I was thinking about it because they're teasing that his next, uh, his next game is going to get announced at the Game Awards next week, so I'm super excited for that. Um... Yeah, Pony Island, I was not super impressed by. Because the obvious... It, it, it was good writing, right? It was scary. But the gameplay was not... It was fine. It just wasn't really that interesting. Inscription, it had a great, meaty gameplay and a, a really interesting story with interesting writing and characters. But yeah, Pony Island, the whole idea was like, what if a cutesy game was actually sinister? And it's like, that's neat. But it's when it becomes overtly sinister, right? When there's they start having just demons in it, or they make the background all dark and spooky. That defeats the point. It's the equivalent of, you know, just like a character saying how they're feeling. You're taking the subtext and you're forcing it into the text, and it's like, I'm not here for that. Let's pull it back a few. Right? Like, give me give me the two and the two. I'll add them together for four. You don't need to do it for me. And you doing it for me makes me feel stupid, right? It makes me... It feels like you're condescending to me. Like, oh, you can't do it for yourself? It's like, yes, I can. Trust me that I'm smart enough to put this together. It's not that hard. Though, granted, with where media literacy is at lately... There's so many arguments I've been in that have been sparked by someone just, like, completely misreading something I've said. And it's not even about tone. It's literally just their reading comprehension did not meant that they could not understand the sentence I was saying. And I had to spend a long time breaking down what I meant. Keep in mind, though, if you're watching and I got in an argument with you, probably not talking about you. I get into a lot of arguments, unfortunately. I'm a very brash person in general, and I don't let things go very much, which I probably should for my own health at least. But um, yeah, it, I'm probably not talking about you. I'm probably talking about one of the 20 other arguments I've been in lately. Uh, anyways. Hee, <laughs> wow, for a geezer, you sure put up a fight. Where'd you get all those moves? Ah, well, my hats aren't mere fashion accessories. Each one bestows great powers upon me. Oh, powers? I'll take 10 of your finest hats then. Sadly, the powers are unique to yours truly. They'd only make you look powerful. 
and classy. Oh, blast. Well, <laughs> uh, see you later then. Indeed. Ding, 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 ding. Cool, I got enough to get that thing from... Uh, Mr. Master... Miss... Mysterion? What was her name? The Mystical. Oh, I got two boss fights. Can't avoid this one. Ah, Polar Knight. I had some business I had to... No, wait, never mind. It's just a commoner. Ugh, forget the stupid order of no quarter. Maybe I just need a new angle. Something where I can show off my big, huge brain. Hey, you. You're a scientist, right? You sure look like one. So if I beat you in a fight, then I'll become a scientist. Huh, hey, uh, I have no absolute, absolutely no idea what you're going on about. Ha ha ha. I see my natural science talents are already messing with your mind. Check out this string theory! Huh. Yes. Whoops. Uh, hold on. Bob, can you sign? Yeah. And... Go with the sentry. Ah, well, I did okay. I think I might only stick to three hours tonight. I've been doing a lot lately, so I'm pretty, pretty tired in general. I'm trying to stream more, obviously, but it's like, I just don't have the time. You know, I got work to do. I'm gotten rapidly older. Because again, of the whole stupid illness stuff I was dealing with. It's not even really an illness. It's side effects from what was supposed to be medication. It made things worse. But I didn't really have any problems. <coughs> I had some minor problems. Ah, damn it. I just got a bunch of others jammed on top. Thanks to poor Dr. Ring. Yes. Yes! That's when you want to get him. Right before he rips back down. Oh, you get him for like four. That sucks. I couldn't even really dodge that. Man. Ha ba 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 ba. Oh, thank goodness. Okay, I can get around. I'll come back to him. I'll come back to him. But for now, I just wanna get some other stuff done. Mainly get some health vials so I can actually take him on. Hello? Who has awakened me? Mortal, dost thou need me to tick? Alchemist! News of thy villainy has reached the trouble pond. Be gone from this sacred grotto. But, uh, my liege, <laughs> I've actually come to learn to d dance. See, I can only sort of twitch. Enough, disgraceful. Where is the motion? Where is the passion? Thou needst a miracle. Oh, that's part of the story for him. That's cute. Wilt thou receive the gift of rhythm, humble alchemist? As it so happens, we are miracle workers. No one is without hope. Places everyone. That's what I'm saying, man. No one is without hope. Exactly. Thank you, Trapple. No matter how bad you think you might be at something, just do it. If you enjoy doing it, Awesome. If you don't, don't worry about it. You're not going to be good at everything. 
the amount of time it would take to be good at everything is ridiculous. Oh, smooching. But there's, you can be good at several things. I'm okay at streaming. I at least know technically what to do. I don't like what that crown looks like from the top. That's unpleasant. I'm okay at piano. I can kind of draw. I know a lot about game design and I'm starting to do more praxis. That's the thing. I'm not worried about being great at it. There's an ego part of me that would like to be good at it, but most for the most part, I'm just enjoying it. Because if I wasn't, I wouldn't do it. And there are things I've done before where I'm like, yeah, I just don't really enjoy doing this, so I don't do it. Simple as that. And that's how it's done. A true dancer holds down to practice. I shall grant you my eye calls, but only for noble causes. Oh, uh, ha ha ha, certainly. Noble is my middle name. <laughs> Still require a nominal repentance fee for proper sanctification now. Choose your eye call wisely. Hmm. Uh, we'll go with this. Yuck! Keep thy beak clean, O plagued one. Return if thou hast further need of my blessing. Sell some stuff. Uh, oh, I don't have 60 yet. I had 60. Then I got into the armored arp, erp, erp, pursed. And now I no longer do. Definitely need that. Okay, let's take on Baz again. Balls? Oh, well, I gotta take on this kid first. Oh, it's a cutscene. Guess, I thought I heard someone. Hey, you, with all the bird mask. I know all about you. You're a legendary alchemist. I'm a hero, too. I'll have you know. A hero in training, of course. You look like someone I can trust. So I'll let you in on a huge secret. I have a crush on a girl. You know how to brew love potions, right? How about this? If I can beat you in a friendly sparring match, I don't have time to play around with you, kid. Oh, come on, you big stick in the mud. If you win, I'll tell you my funniest joke. Let me... There we go. Oh, he's running right into him. Oh, he's running right into him. Yes! Oh, I just had a thought. I'm gonna be seeing my mom for Christmas, as well as my dad. It's gonna be a whole thing, because it's like my mom lives in Nebraska now, but she bought a house closer to where we lived when I was in high school in Washington. So it's like, you know, going there, then like taking a train to my dad's place for like Christmas, Christmas. I just had a thought of like, some of my earliest memories of video games are with, you know, my mom. We had, um, I remember her having, like, a Game Boy Color. Oh, I barely won that. Having a Game Boy Color with Link's Awakening. And I remember playing Sonic the Hedgehog with her on Sega Genesis. 
And like, that's how I learned part of how I learned how to count. Like we would count out how many times you had to hit Eggman in the first level. And I could never get very far. But I was just thinking, it's like, I have Sonic on my Switch. Maybe I could play Sonic with my mom again. That'd be neat. wonder if she'd be into that. I don't know. Just a little, little memory that cropped up. Uh, well, you beat me fair and square. Guess I'm gonna have to woo my beloved the old fashioned way. Ah, win some, lose some. Well, whatever. It's telling a joke time. How many tickles does it take to make an octopus laugh? Ten tickles. <laughs> Ten. Ten tickles. Ten tickles. <laughs> well, how devious. <laughs> hey, it's a Rise original. Just remember, Knight's Code, 55th bow. Mirth makes worth. That was fun. Ah. All right, Boz. Let's get Lerman. Hello. Yeah, that's the thing is, only having five health is really messing with my sins. Oh, that's what you gotta do. You gotta get him right in the middle. Right as he's about to jump off. So he can pop, pop, pop. Oh, look at that. Oh, it feels good. Ah, where are y'all's holiday plans? You doing anything interesting? I'm just like... Yeah, I do a lot of traveling. See family. Have a good time. Head back, you know, head back to the northwest for a while. Oh, 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 oh. Nice, nice, nice. Hee-hee, <laughs> looks like the only thing you should be hitting is the books. That's one more loss for the boss. Guess I'll just stay here, since I ain't no good at nothing. Rip in peace, balls. <laughs> Uh, oh yeah, I was gonna buy... I was gonna buy that thing... from her. The Magicist. Nice. Clean. Whoops. Sorry. Sorry. Okay. Uh, we got time for probably one more level, I think. Uh, well, what happens if I go to the Explodatorium? That's my spot. Let's get Violet. Ah, jeez, Plague Knight. Uh, we really messed up. You left us in charge and we failed you. Everything is going haywire and there's an intruder afoot. Watch out. How was it, Shovel Knight? I will say the music for these photo times is one of my favorites. It's, it's very pumping and heavy. God, I'm so excited for Mina the Hollower, dude. It's coming up. It's coming up sometime. a sick combat focus top down GB uh GBC light not even GBA oh excuse me oh I see so if you you can get a health bar. You use a health file to max yourself out, and then you can use one more to heal. And that's it's my own cash. What are you doing? Hey, stop. That don't make no sense. Aren't you my bird? 
Don't I know you? Stop. Stop. I am not pleased. Um, what we get? Uh, uh, actually, I was a little loose. Light on them. Great. Been having great trouble with my word selection lately. What's up with that? Run, 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 run. Yeah, I would say this is. Uh, I definitely prefer the other ones to this. This is still not my favorite. But I appreciate what it's doing. It's, it doesn't, for my gameplay style, it doesn't work great. Just because I'm very much the fucking, you know, last everything in sight kind of gamer. It's like, no subtlety kind of person. Uh, so, a more combat focused character is my deal. But, the movement system is pretty cool. As I was saying to my roommates, it's like it, you rocket jump just constantly, basically. Which is fun in concept. I mean, it's, it's wacky and silly. I don't particularly like it for a full game, I think. You know, it's, it's pretty clear with this one that it was just a Kickstarter reward, even though they did do a pretty good job with it. But, yeah, you can tell that it was the... Uh, Next ones where they were like, let's really knuckle down and make something great. And no shade, man. Making games is hard. If you already made a game and you're making another game in the same world, I mean, why not just use the same app, you know? Makes sense to me. Heck, I would probably do the same thing. Although the game I'm making, uh, the concept is really not bad. I say making. The game I'm going to make, it's in very early stages. It's in the outlining of the script stages. So it's going to be a pretty long time before it sees the light of day. It's going to be episodic, though, because the idea is that it gets more, more ambitious with each episode, right? So it's really, it's just four separate games in the same story. Um... But they're all going to be small enough games that we'll call them episodes, right? It's not like when they do episodes and it's like clearly just the same game split up for no reason. Episodic gaming, remember that stuff? You don't really see it outside of indies anymore. Um, Like, indie horror does it a lot, which makes sense. It's probably the same reason that us, we're gonna do that. Because, uh... Um... Nice. Because it gives us, uh, time to actually, like, figure out how to use our tools. And, like, we don't have to put out... We can put out one episode, get people interested, and get money. And I don't mean that as, like, a, oh, I'm going to get rich or anything. No, it's like a, you know, it costs money to make games. No matter how much you like doing it, it costs money at some level. So the passion side is not taking a salary for yourself necessarily. It doesn't mean that you shouldn't... Um, that you shouldn't, uh, make money still. But yeah, we're gonna need to make money to make some of these later episodes for sure. So yeah, the idea then is that you fund the later episodes with the earlier episodes. Hopefully. Or you still do it from, um, 
you still do it without extra capital. And that's also acceptable, it's just like not ideal. Son of a butt. I thought it wasn't getting thrown back. No, that's a later thing. This is the treasure magnet one. I couldn't afford the one I wanted. Um. I still want. I'm just gonna leave that secret. I think I'm good. Uh. Yeah, it makes sense. At the same time, though, there's plenty of indie games where I'm like, that doesn't really make sense as being episodic. Like, Bendy and the Ink Machine. There was no reason for that to be episodic. Like, it's just it's different floors of the same game. Like, story-wise, they made it work, but it felt, like, really arbitrary. I'm just, I'm not a huge fan of Bendy. I wanted to be. And, like, some of my favorite musicians, they got their start because they made, you know, songs about Bendy. And I get it. You can make great songs about Bendy because it's, uh, it's very evocative. It's got a great theme. That's what it had going for it. More than anything else is that the theme and the aesthetic of Bendy and the Ink Machine is great. I adore it. It's, like, one of my the rubber hose thing. Love it, though. It is kind of hard to suspend my disbelief that people in the 30s would be okay with a cartoon about a demon. I don't think that would have been the case. People would freak out about that now. Um... Yeah, people would freak out about that now, let alone back then. Or in a bigger... Oh, yeah, we were... No. Yeah, that's probably what that side thing was. Like. Well, that's fine. Um... Yeah, the unfortunate thing is, like, Bendy had, like, a lot of potential, but then the gameplay went to the side. That's the thing as well with, uh, Hello Neighbor. It's, like, pure aesthetic. It's, like, the idea of the neighbor being there and, like... Jimmy Two Shoes? Who's Jimmy Two Shoes? Oh, no Jimmy Two Shoes. Um... But, uh... That game has, like, had no gameplay for a long time, and by the time they finally were like, okay, we need to actually make a game to this, they couldn't really come up with anything. So it's just kind of gibberish. It's like, just find a key, I guess, and unlock an area. It's nonsense. The level design makes no sense in Hello Neighbor. But aesthetically, it's very cool. The designs are neat. It's just, you know, there's not a game there, or there is a game, but it's very sloppy. Because they had a big idea, but they didn't have uh, a concept. It was it, they had a hook. They didn't have uh, anything past that, which happens. But also, I think the problem is they put out the the early stuff. It got some hype because like Mark Flyer played it and such. Um, and so they were like, well, we gotta keep working on it. But it's like, they probably figured out partway through, it's like, we don't have any more ideas for this, though. But at that point, they just were too committed. They can't just throw away this idea that a bunch of people like. It makes no sense. Ah. <sighs> um... Uh, but, like, yeah, they clearly, like, didn't have an idea. I think Yandere Simulator is a similar thing, where, like, if he had just released something 
if you'd made something pared down and released it closer to when people were doing Let's Plays, and people cared, like, years and years ago, he might have been able to manage something, but, like, the hype died down, and then it became clearer and clearer that he himself was a creep. And that he just isn't competent. Like, he can code-ish, but he shouldn't be working on, like, one of what would honestly be one of the most ambitious ideas in gaming. Like, even if a AAA studio took on that idea, they would have a lot of trouble. Um, so the fact that he thought he could do it and spent years doing it, and it's like, dude, like, you gotta pair it back. Yeah, feature creep the game. Every one of his vlogs is like, oh, I have a whole new system to add. Oh, I have a whole new system to add. It's like, stop, dude. Finish the systems you got, and then maybe think about these in, like, an update or an expansion or something. Get the game done. Finished is better than, uh, you know, better than good. An old cartoon that I only vaguely remember that was at least sort of healthy. Hmm. Might have to look that up. I don't know about that one. A beautiful game with bad gameplay is an interesting failure state. Still not fun to play. Yeah, it's interesting to play games like that. That's the thing. Is like I watched full playthroughs of Benny and the Ink Machine, but I, I forget most of the gameplay because it's just such nothing gameplay. It's the most bog standard, like, you know, this is a survival horror kind of gameplay. Grab a key. Go to a door. Grab a key. Go to a door. Do some bad... Uh, combat. So, like... Yeah, it's still, like, clearly iconic. But it's iconic because of the looks, not because of the actual game. Um, yeah. Alright, I think we're at the boss. Which I believe is Shovel Knight, right? No, this is the mini-boss. Who is this guy? He's hanging out in my Explodatorium. I like when mini bosses don't have a health bar the way that full bosses do. So I keep forgetting that the, the bait bomb can still hurt me, guys. It's not necessarily great, but it works. Thank you for the stuff. Oh, can I do it? No, I don't gotta do it. But yeah, also, uh, Hello Neighbor is also a feature creep game. Because they just kept adding features, but they weren't, like, motivated by anything other than, you know, trying to find a game. Like, if you watch... If you watch playthroughs... I did the... If you go to, like, Markiplier's playlist, where he kept playing it every time it got, like, a new beta update, you'll see, like, they kept adding stuff, and there was weird stuff. It was, like, some sort of weird stealth like, side section with robots and, like, grocery carts or something, and none of it was clear. Very poorly conveyed. It was hard, but it wasn't hard because the gameplay was hard. It was hard because, um, it just was, was unclear what you were supposed to be doing. No. Like, that's the thing. It's it's just an unmotivated game. Like, all they have is, like, you gotta hide from the neighbor. It's like, okay, what am I doing that I need to hide from the neighbor? Uh, creeping in his house. Okay, what am I doing in his house? I go into more of his house, I guess? It's like, there's not... Like, it's it'd be interesting because it's a big, weird house, right? That's kind of the thing. It's like, you see the house and you're like, whoa, it's giant. What's in there? But the reality is uh, nothing much. Not anything super interesting is in the house. It's just kind of a, a big weird house. Like, one of the more interesting things is the shark pool, right? But that's, uh, you already know about that because it's in all the songs. Right?
I don't know, it's it acts like there's something sinister, and there kind of is, right? But it's, like, really unclear what the sinister thing is. I guess that he, like, kidnaps people, but why? And for what? That's the thing. It's all mystery, but there's, like, no real intrigue because it's all just, like, so mysterious with no real answers. There's no point, at least in my watching it, where I was like, whoa, what could that mean? I was just like, okay, so that's there. What does that mean? And if you think about it for a minute, it's like, there's really not that many options for what it can mean. There's no, like, big revelation of, like, oh my god, that's what was happening? Whoa! It's like, no. It's like, it's a creepy guy. He's doing the obvious creepy thing of kidnapping people in a big, weird, crazy house. Like, there's nothing surprising. I, I guess they did put, like, a ton of development into the AI of the neighbor, and it's like, I guess that's neat, but, like, it doesn't matter for the most part because most of the game, you're not anywhere near the neighbor. In fact, in most of the game, most of the game is about avoiding the neighbor. Not, uh... Like, avoiding being near them in the first place, not, you know, running away from them. And in general, when you're running away from them, it's just like a mad dash. It's not like something where you're like... Ah, jeez. Yeah. It's not like something where you're strategizing. You run away, you get behind cover. You hope he forgets you. That's kind of it. You, like, just keep something between you and him. It's not like a stealth game where you're, like, having to go around him or anything. I don't know, maybe they improved it later. But, like, I've watched the development of it for so long, and I kept waiting for there to be, like, a game. And there kind of just wasn't. It was just kind of, like, an interactive experience. It always just felt like a tech demo. It was like, what if we made a thing with this crazy neighbor? And in fact, when you look at the design, that sort of like pseudo Pixar design of his, um, like it looks like a tech demo design, right? It doesn't look like a finished design. It looks like, hey, look, this is what could be in a game. Like he looks like a stock model or something. Like a very stylized stock model, but still like, He's not actually especially interesting as a design. I don't know. I'm just talking a lot of crap on indie devs. Video games are hard to make. Game design is tricky, but... And I'm sure they've done a lot of stuff behind the scenes that would be super impressive. But the thing is, I'm not behind the scenes. I'm in front of the scenes playing the game. And if I'm not impressed there, then I don't really care. You know? And that's what I'm saying again with, like, art, is, like, the process is interesting. And I would say the process is more interesting in a lot of ways probably than the game. But also, that doesn't mean that the game is good. It just means that it's interesting. And they probably had a good time making it. So it is still art because it's still about the process. But it's also, like, I'm not going to play the end result. It's like, what? The, you, you didn't do great, but you did something, so that's got value. That's the thing, it has value. Even if it's just as a cautionary tale, right? Uh, these guys, these gooey gusses. Uh, I don't like them. No, thank you. This one is the most unchanged level between the two because ugh, it feels like they designed this around him. Because they knew since funding that they were going to have part of the game uh, be this route. You guys say route or root? Route would be R O W T and root would be like R O O T.
But then English is stupid because R O W makes a ra. O W makes an ow. Like an how. Or row if you're British. But then if it's like rowing a boat. Or like a row of things. Son of a. Mm, then it's uh. It'd be. Ra it'd be. Wrote. That's just not how you're gonna say it. And accents come into it. I mean, I've said both at different times, I think. And depending on the character, since, you know, I'm in the position where I'm not always speaking as myself, um, I will often say something different from my- no, oh jeez, oh my god, so many guys. I will often say something different for the sake of, you know, uh, sake of character. I'm just interested by language, man. It's one of the cooler things about uh, voice acting. I mean, it's part of acting in general, but voice acting in particular is very concerned with it, right? Especially the type that I use. Oh yeah, also Thanksgiving, man. I, Thanksgiving came and went, and that was fun. I did, I, I pulled back a lot this year. Usually I do like everything from scratch and do like, you know, uh, like seven different items and desserts and stuff. But this year I just did like mashed potatoes, mashed potatoes from scratch, stuffing from scratch, because my stuffing is awesome. I love to make it. I did like a pre-made meatless holiday roast that came with the gravy, which I used for the mashed potatoes. Um, I made like pecan Brussels sprouts. Uh, I made two pies Mostly from scratch. I didn't make the crust because, like, when it. Anytime I make crust from scratch, it's like, yeah, it can be good, but, like, honestly, it's not gonna be that much different from store bought, and I'd rather just save myself the time. Um. Didn't make cranberry sauce, which I like, but I always end up being the only one who eats it, and then we end up not going through a lot of it. Uh. Yeah, it took, like, five hours over the course of a couple days. You know, the day before Thanksgiving I did a bunch of prep, and then the day of Thanksgiving I did a bunch of cooking. Ooh, is that a secret over there? It is. Ooh. Get out of my room. Boing. Whoa. Oh, how about that? Try that gold one. I take that. that guess not my man's running over there I hope he's having a good time all right we're gonna do this and then we're done I hear footsteps someone's near <laughs> leave me alone show yourself plague knight your trickery will not stop me trickery <laughs> the fruits of my research are no mere trick boom <laughs> now let's have a lesson shall we I promise <laughs> Will be enlightening! I believe that is the dialogue from the other route. That's cool. Um, let me switch. Oh, he's got all the bits and bobs. He's been doing stuff. Ah, oh, you butthead, he's got the trouble chalice. I was gonna say, does he have the stuff I gave to Chester, but no. He's got stuff from even, even later in the game. Dang. Except for the Infinidagger! Although the Infinidagger is a problem. That's what I was wrong about when I played the uh, other version. The Infinidagger is specifically. Oh, and he drops money! That's fun. Give me that essence. Give me that essence, boy. Ah, you 
But... Oh, but there's his victory sound. That's fun. Oh, I need to stop scr- I have allergies and it's winter time, so my eyes have been going nuts. Hey, yo. Hey, yo. What is this? Ah, hello. Hee hee hee. Thought you'd get away with your essence, huh? Ha <laughs> sleeping like a blue baby. Nice. All right, I'll do the cleanup stuff, and then we're good for tonight. I had to stop by the Explodatorium to set my addle-brained minions in order. You'll never believe who's there wrecking my lab. Um, shovel knight. Impossible. You read my mind. I don't know. It's weird. My limited interaction with him he just seems to love busting up glassware. So, what are we working on? Yep, that'll do it. What do we got? What do we got? What do we got? Some goodies? Take a gander at your new arsenal. <laughs> Ooh, that's pretty good. Nice. That's pretty good. I'm gonna save it all, though. So that I can go get um, the upgrade to my health plan. Sell my sheets. There he goes. Oh, God, 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 God. I also appreciate that it just automatically takes you back to your home base. Save you the time. Alright, Chester. Do do bing 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 bing. This. Oh, that's the thing. Here we go, new health tonic bag. Ah, oh, but it doesn't come with them. Rip. I'm gonna have to run back. Get some more health tonics. That's fine, that's fine. Oh, it's so annoying that I can't just get up there. Grabbed a couple, and that'll do it. Go back to the home screen so it saves. There we go. All right, that'll do it for Shovel Knight for tonight. We're going to raid over to somebody, so don't leave quite yet, but thanks a ton for watching, everybody. I know I haven't been streaming a ton lately. I have the, like, way more lax schedule of once a week, and I've been busy, so I've been, unfortunately, skipping streams or, like, kind of getting disorganized or unfocused and doing other streams. I might move to more streams in the new year. Um, I just gotta get on top of stuff, you know? I've been behind on a lot of things, business-wise, and in my personal projects, but I will say this. I'm not gonna announce this thing until later, because I'm still working on it, but there's probably going to be a special stream at least once a month, hopefully every couple weeks, uh, they'll be coming that I hope people will like. It's going to be very different, but I think it'll be very cool, and it's going to require a lot of work. I think the work will be worth it. So, stay tuned for that. I'll announce that before I leave for the holidays, so... Yeah. I mean, it can hurt. Actually, when I was doing more streams, I would get just so exhausted from it, and it made me not like streaming as much, so... Um... For now, I'm just pacing myself to try and do one a week, not force myself to if I really don't feel like it. Uh, but yeah, there'll be more variety of streams. Yeah, exactly. I get it. It's not that I'm not trying to commit. It's just like literally with my workload and stuff, I just don't have the time or energy. And it is just a hobby for me. Even though I'm at the point where I can technically make money from it, I'm not going to be making any kind of 
money that's like worth stressing myself out over. So I'm just doing it because I enjoy it. And if I'm at a, it, I'm having a week where I don't feel like I'll enjoy it, then I'll put it off for a week. But this other thing, I think I'm gonna like doing a lot, even though it's a lot more work. And I've been working very hard just even getting prepared for it. So stay tuned for that. So please take the time to join like the Discord, which I will uh, link once more. Follow, subscribe if you're so kind. I spelt that wrong. Um, and yeah, we're gonna read over to someone. So let's see who's available. Where is my, oh, my phone's up there. Hold on a sec, we're gonna go to the uh, end screen. There it is. Let me grab my phone so I can see who's online. Who's streaming? Let's see, it could be any number of people, I'm sure. Friday night. People love streaming on Friday nights. Maybe June. He was playing Gris. Yeah, let's go to June Yoon with two underscores. Check out June. June is a voice actor. Um, I'd like to consider a friend, though we're not super close. Used to be in a pretty private server with him, which was cool. Um, taking some improv classes from him. Uh, yeah, he's just a real awesome voice actor. He's a professional Korean voice actor. He does it in Korean and English. He's in Genshin Impact as a few characters and a bunch of other things. So let him know I sent you. Have a great rest of your weekend. I'll see y'all next Friday. Probably. All right. Goodbye. Goodbye. Goodbye.